The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. So held on this day, December 15th, 2022. If we could all please rise for a moment of silence and then our Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of our country. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have roll call, please. Carlson? Here. Vieira? Here. Maniscalco? Here. Pertec? Here. Goose? Here. Miranda? Here. And Citro? Here. We have a fiscal form. Thank you very much. At this time, I will entertain a motion to accept the minutes from our last meeting. Second. We have a motion made by Councilman Miranda, seconded by Councilman Goods. All in favor say aye. 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 And Mr. Chairman, may I? Surely. Thank you. Good morning. Martin Shelby, uh, City Council Attorney. Um, also, Mr. Chairman, if you would uh, have a, a, a motion to ratify, confirm, and approve all minutes of City Council meetings and workshops, please. So moved. This is to ratify, confirm, and approve all completed minutes of Tampa City Council and its workshops. Motion made by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilwoman Hertak. All in favor? Thank you very, very much. Let's go through the uh, approval of the agenda. If I can, just the guidelines, just very briefly, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this meeting is being broadcast on Spectrum Channel 640, Frontier Channel 15, and on the internet at tampa.gov forward slash live stream. Um, the public may attend in person here at Old City Hall. 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, or by communications media technology, otherwise referred to as CMT. That requires pre-registration. The instructions uh, for which are available on the City Council's webpage at tampa.gov forward slash city council. Mr. Chairman, I'd ask for a motion to waive the rules to allow the continued use of CMT. We have a motion made by Councilman uh, Good, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Mr. Shelby, again, is there any way that we can make this yes, sir. something where we don't have to read this off every meeting? It, it'll, be, it'll be ready for your uh, uh, next regular meeting to, to have to talk about the, um, the rules of procedure to um, amend those so we can have them included in there. Thank you very much. Thank All right, you, let's go over the agenda. Uh, there is two items. Uh, we will not be having an administrative update. There is two items, items number 45 and 46. That, will, that is asked by staff that we hear during that time of administrative updates. We have a motion. Second. We have a motion made by Councilman Mascot, seconded by Councilman Randall. All in favor? Aye. 
Councilman Carlson. No, I, I just wanted to mention on item number three, I, I'm the one who made the motion months ago to ask the EDC to give updates. And just like we do with DOT and all the other groups, uh, the idea, I don't know if we explicitly said it, the idea is to present for 10 minutes and in particular to give an update on the criteria that we had set as city council. So I don't know if we need to, do we need to vote on that? Or I think typically our presentations are 10 minutes anyway. No, we, we'll be fine on that. Thank you. All right. Mr. Chubb. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Council, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, items number 75 through 77, 75, 76, 77 are ordinances being presented for first reading consideration related to the charter. I would ask Council that um, you make that a time certain. So that be the first item that takes place um, uh, at 1.30 when, when you come back from lunch, um, assuming you do. Um, then um, that is because that um, um, Alan Zimmett, the attorney for Brian Miller and Olive, is going to be appearing virtually uh, and um, to accommodate his schedule and, of course, to uh, um, move things along. If it could be done at 1.30, that would be great as part of the motion. Then with, with counsel, with no objection from counsel, we will make that time certain at 1.30 with hope that we get through the rest of the agenda before we go to lunch. So moved. We have a motion made by Councilman Maniscalco, Second. seconded by Councilman Vieira. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, agenda, agenda item number five. We'll be hearing that six and seven will be heard together if there's not any objection. Yes, I've, there was supposed to be a written report, but I would like that to be, I would like them to come speak on that. Thank you, uh, uh, Councilman Hurtak. Seven, eight is still be heard. Councilman Vieira, you had um, a memorandum on that? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll speak on it and, and whatnot. I, if, the, if the chief wants to uh, say anything uh, additionally, but I don't think I need any... Uh, uh, folks to be here for that. But I, I do plan on speaking on it, if I may. Okay, Councilman uh, Maniscalco, number nine. Um, no, I, I don't need Sharisha Hills here. There is a written report, and then uh, I will take it back to the uh, the neighborhood that was uh, concerned about this, and I'll handle it from there. Thank is you. Is there any other council members who would like to speak to agenda item number nine, or here's from uh, staff? Um, I would. Okay. <laughs> Councilman Goods, agenda item number 10. I'm sure we're going to want to hear from that. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Councilman Vieira. Uh, yes, sir. I, I don't That's need. 11. Oh, yes, sir. Um, I'll, again, I'll speak on that to, to um, clarify my understanding of the, of the report, et cetera, but I don't need anyone here for that. <coughs> Councilman Goods. Yes, and there is some very good reports on EBO and minority businesses in that, so I'd like to hear that as well. Uh, let's see. Councilman Carlson. Agenda item number 12. Yes, and they're prepared to present. Thank you very much. Councilman Mascaco, agenda item number 13. Uh, yes, there is a, a, a request that the item be continued January 5th. However, I just would like to make some brief statements on it. And um, I believe Mr. B Day did you know, provide in the memo uh, uh, a few points that I can bring up. So. I thank you very much. Then we have Councilman Mascaco, agenda item number 14. Uh, yes, if we could have um, Mr. Benson here for that. I believe Mr. Benson is away, uh, has been called for something, but um, Ms. Nicole Travis is about ready to come up to the podium. Good morning, Nicole Travis, Administrator of Development and Economic Opportunity. Mr. Benson is out um, today, and if you would like me to speak on it, I can. The memo, it's, we, we're asking that the memo stands on its own. Um, there are minor changes to the West Tampa overlay code changes, but um, he's not with us today, here with us today. If you could then just speak briefly, you know, just on the, the top points, and then we'll, you know, when we'll get into a lengthy discussion, we'll just go by the. Uh, okay, because I need my heavyweight here to get into the, to yeah, the no, nitty gritty, no, no but I can, no I can take it. Okay, right. thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes, Councilman Pierre. You know, I'm, I'm looking at people, and, and if I may, I'm sorry, I'm going back on number eight. Who was going to uh, pre be prepared to speak on this? Because I want to make sure I didn't preemptively, and, and I'm looking into the audience. It was, was someone prepared to speak on number eight, or? Oh, I'm so sorry. That's on the victims of crime issue. The victims okay, of crime. you were. Uh, 
Uh, Deputy Chief Johnson is here and is prepared. Okay, then you know what? If you're prepared, then by all means, but let, let's go forward if, if you're prepared, because I don't want to. Okay, so let me go back on that, if I may, sir. Uh, please, thank you. Yes, sir. Councilman Mascaco, Judge Item 14. We just touched on it. Uh, Nicole will, Ms. Travis will, will Thank bring you. up a few points. Mm -hmm. uh, agenda item number 15. <laughs> Councilwoman Hurtak. Um, yes, I, be I believe we, we have to have, uh, um, this is the second presentation, so it needs to be. Thank you very much. Agenda item number 16, Councilman um, Vieira. I, I move, if I may, to continue this to February 2nd of 2023. Second. We have a motion made by Councilman Vieira, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. That's continued to February 15th, you said? Uh, second. Second. Excuse me. Agenda item number 17, Councilman Carlson. Yes, we're just, I think we're just voting on this, and Ms. Zellman said she's going to have somebody to answer questions that we have. This is going to be continued, I believe, sorry, until uh, January 19th, 2023. Wrong one, sorry. Yep, okay. Yep. Just for clarification purposes for the motion, should that be saying receive city money as opposed to sending money? Because I don't know whether that was... Uh, yeah, city we, money, sorry. Would you like then to just... Uh, with, by unanimous consent, just amend that to correct that. Yeah, so I move that we change the word to city instead of sending. Motion made by Councilman Carlson, seconded by Councilman Goods. All in favor? Aye. So I'd, I'd like to make a motion to move this to uh, January 19th. Second. A motion made by Councilman Carlson, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Agenda number 18, Councilman Goods. Are you, are you uh, good with the memorandum? I'm good with it, but I still want to hear from him. They got a lot of calls about this uh, last couple of days, so I just want to call to see a few words, and I'm going to ask me a couple of questions. All right, then we will hear that. Agenda number uh, 19, we will have to hear. Uh, agenda number 20, which is I'm Councilman Vieira. I'm the, fine, sir. They're asking for a continuance to February 16th. Oh, I, I didn't see that. Then I'm not fine. I move to continue it to February 16th. <laughs> we have a motion made by Councilman Vieira, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Uh, and then agenda item number 21, Councilman Carlson, this too is asking for a continuance to February 16th. Yes, I move to um, continue this to February 16th. We have a motion made by Councilman Carlson, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. And I believe. <coughs> thank you very much. There's a motion to approve the agenda by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. All right. I believe that we have a presentation, accommodation to uh, a member of the ATU Local 1464 Employee of the Month. Right, Mr. Chairman, Council Members, I did not recognize the name fully. I just got it this morning. And then when I see you walk up, you gentlemen, you know, and, and ladies, let, let me say that sometimes, you know, you meet people in a lifetime that you just bring a good spirit, you know. And I remember when I first started, when we were at 1710, a lot of people know what that is. That was the old police department. Mr. Miranda would know what that is. Right down there on Tampa Street. When we yeah. first got on the job, we had to wait to get employed. We, we were down there training us how to write a report, do things like that. So today is a, a a good joyous day for me, I tell you. Uh, so, Mr. Steve, you want to talk about Ms. Phyllis, and I'll, I'll finish it up? Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good, good morning, Council. Good morning, City of Tampa. I'm Steve Simon, President of ATU Local 1464, and I'm happy to present to you the ATU Employee of the Month, Mrs. Phyllis Regalado. <laughs> I'd like to kick it off with a letter from Mayor Castor. If you don't mind. 
Dear Phyllis, congratulations on being selected as the Amalgamated Transit Union's Employee of the Month for your professionalism, strong work ethics, and for going above and beyond in all aspects in your position as an Office Support Specialist 4 with the Tampa Police Department. You have demonstrated a firm commitment and high standards from your hire date over three decades ago, including working in major crimes as an investigator aide, contributing to solving crimes and keeping our community safe. As an office support specialist four, you serve as a personal assistant to the District 3's major and are also the division secretary where you assume multiple responsibilities that require attention to detail, multitasking skills, and maintaining administrative tasks such as squad rosters, the district's budget, correspondence, and much more. You have earned the respect of your superiors, peers, and community, and you are well known as someone who is enthusiastic, dedicated, passionate, and results-oriented. You, uh, you are an asset and integral part of the Tampa Police Department and the City of Tampa's mission of providing superior services, and your proficiency and outstanding positive attitude make you highly deserving of this recognition. You are admired, well-respected, and set a shining example for others to follow. It is employees like you, Phyllis, that make me proud to serve as mayor. Thank you for your dedication and service, Mayor Jane Castor. Yes, I'd like to present that to you, as well as a token of appreciation from ATU Local 1464, which is a $100 gift card. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to turn it over to Chief Burkhaw to say a few words, please. Sure. Good morning, Council Chief Burkhaw. Phyllis and I go way back, actually almost three decades ago. And uh, in fact, my wife used to work with Phyllis, and they were very good friends. So I know Phyllis very well, and I'm very proud to be here to present her for this award. Uh, in addition to that, what that letter didn't encompass is she works with about 300 personnel in District 3, between professional staff and, and sworn staff. And it gets crazy, and Phyllis is very patient, and she wants to educate and take the time to train our officers, no matter how many are standing outside her office trying to get things done. So it takes a special talent for that, and that's why we also want to recognize you. So thank you, and congratulations. You know, I'm not going to read all this because I can tell a story better, because I've worked with you a long time and again when I first started with me and John me and John with you guys at 0710 and again for you to be here standing before me to get this award is very heartfelt I just want to thank you for the work you've done I know how difficult it is dealing like the chief says with a lot of different police officers you're very soft-spoken. I wish I was like you. you know, I wish I, had, uh, I wish I was like I you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you caught me on a good day. <laughs> but again, you get the job done. Uh, I know you served with Calvin as well, Major Johnson yeah. over there. So, and you've done a great job. But I just want to say thank you for what you've done. And on behalf of Tampa City Council, on this day, we want to give you an accommodation for the work you've done. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Now, there's some gentlemen and ladies who want to give you some gifts, and they will help from council. Yes, you can. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, council. Mike MacArthur of Steps Towing Service. And without people like you, it, it, our city doesn't run. So we would like to, a small token of our appreciate, appreciation on behalf of Todd Step. The Steps towing a, a $50 gift card to the Olive Garden. Go out and have dinner, take some time off. Thank you for everything you do Thank for our so city. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Phyllis. Good morning. Donna Thank McBride you. with the Strath Center. Oh, we want to thank you so much for the support, the tremendous support that you provide our Tampa Police Department and the years of service that you've put in. You're quite dedicated. Uh, we would like you to enjoy a show at your leisure. Um, oh, my goodness. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you. Hi, Phyllis. I'm Mark Haney with Zoo Tampa at Lowry Park. And hi, I'm Mary Lou Bailey. I'm on the board at Zoo Tampa. 
Congratulations. Thank you. And on behalf of the zoo, we want to say thank you for everything that you do for the city. And we've included several passes to come to the zoo. Um, in fact, not right now is a great time to come to the zoo because it's Christmas in the wild. And so tons of, almost a million lights. And uh, we hope to see you there. So thank you. I'll put thank this. You. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. So Congratulations. Thank you. thank you for your service. Welcome to game. Good morning, oh, folks. How are you? Yeah, how about you? Well, congratulations. Good morning, Council. Good morning. Brian Ford, and on behalf of the Glazer family and our entire organization, thank you. Thanks for all that you have done over a very long career. But thanks for the dedication, the sacrifice. And at one buck, we have a tradition. When somebody goes over and above, they get a game ball. Oh, nice. So there's a game ball. Oh, my name. Thank you. Be careful who you hand that to. They might be borrowing it from you for, for a long <laughs> period of time. Uh, Steve Michelini, I, I'm here on behalf of a, a couple different folks, including the Chicho Restaurant Group. They're providing you with a gift certificate so you can go enjoy yourself at breakfast, lunch, or dinner. On behalf of the Tampa Metropolitan YMCA, you can go over there and enjoy yourself. It might be torture, but you can enjoy yourself just the same. Thank you. On behalf of Bella Brava, which is in the Midtown section of Tampa, they're going to provide you with a gift certificate so you can go enjoy yourself over there for lunch or dinner on behalf of Yummy House China Bistro. So you got some takers on that one, right? <laughs> so you can go enjoy yourself over there for lunch or dinner and on behalf of the meat market in Old Hyde Park, you can enjoy yourself there. So congratulations. Thank you for your service. And uh, as others have already said, it's, it's the rank and file on the lower levels that uh, keep the process moving, allows the officers to go out there and do their job. So we appreciate what you do and thank you for your service. Thank you very much. Thank you. Council members. <laughs> Councilman Miranda. Oh, I'm speak? sorry. You tell me to speak. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not often that I'm speechless, but I am, and I want to say thank you. Um, been with TPD from day one. I've had my um, good moments and my bad moments. When, when Councilman Good says I'm soft-spoken, he hasn't been around when the bad moments have happened. <laughs> but I do want to thank everybody. I want to thank the person who nominated me, and I really appreciate it. I've had some fantastic bosses that have helped guide me, um, and I just want to say thank you. All right, all right. <laughs> Councilman Miranda. I, I just want to say thank you again on behalf of all of us. I remember that building there on Tampa Street, and uh, I used to go there quite often, not for the police, but to visit my sister who worked there for many years. You may know her, Yvonne Polo. Yeah. And uh, so I want to say thank you for what you've done and what uh, Michelini said was absolutely correct. You may have the Eiffel Tower, but something under it is holding it up. Thank you very much for all your years of service. Thank you. Councilman from Hurtag. I, uh, I want to echo that thanks. Um, it really sounds like you basically keep District 3 together. So thanks. Um, without folks uh, that can, that are available to answer every question and make sure everything gets done, um, none of uh, no one else can do their jobs. So thank you so much for being that really important part. And I'm really glad that um, someone uh, decided to nominate you for this. So you are obviously very well deserving of it. Thank you. Um, Got some mess up. Thank you very much, and congratulations. It's clear uh, how much you are loved and appreciated, and uh, for all your many, many years of, of hard work and service and everything that you do, you're essential. You're helpful. Um, we appreciate you s sincerely, and this is very well deserved. So, congratulations. Thank you. Councilman Beer. Thank you, sir. Uh, congratulations on your award today. It's very obvious that you're very appreciated and, and loved for all that you do, and we thank you for uh, helping our city always run on time and on the very important tasks that you do. Thank you very much. Thank Merry you. Christmas, and God bless you. Thank Councilman you. Carlson. Yeah, they, <clears throat> just to repeat, thank you very much for all your service and, and long uh, years uh, supporting everyone. Um, public safety is probably the number one issue in our community right now, so we need more people like you to make sure that it runs well and that we uh, support the brave men and women that are protecting us every day. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. She was supposed to be here. <laughs> it's okay. Everybody else, don't worry about it. Uh, you're a family member. You're a family member of the city of Tampa. And most people that live in Tampa don't understand that. But it's people like you that help this city run efficiently, effectively, and for the citizens of Tampa. I thank you for being one of the family members of the city of Tampa. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for things that you're going to do. Thank you for being part of the family. Thank you so much. Well, this is a great Christmas present. <laughs> thank you. Councilman Vieira. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it's uh, my great pleasure today to present to MPO uh, Michael DeStefano, um, the uh, Officer of the Month uh, today, uh, Mr. Chairman, and to all members of Tampa City Council. This is something that Tampa City Council always does for our first responders to um, just promote the general idea in the city of Tampa that we support those who run into situations that the 99% of us run away from, including myself. Um, we are a city, I always say, that supports our police officers, our firefighters, as well as our veterans. I, I always speak to a lot of members of TPD who always say if they're not originally from Tampa and they're from other parts of, of our country, they're always uh, uh, amazed by just how supportive we are as a city of our police officers. So this is certainly something that, uh, that speaks to that. So I will let our uh, chief uh, uh, say some words. Go ahead, sir. Good morning again, Council Lee Burkhaw. So, Master Police Officer D. Stefano actually is on an elite squad that actually handles about 1% of what a typical police officer would handle. And I'm going to read you his story, and you're going to go, wow, I didn't believe that we even had a squad that did what he did. So, uh, he's been employed with the police department for more than 20 years, and he's assigned to the Fugitive Apprehension Unit. And he's a federally sworn special deputy marshal with the U.S. Marshals Regional Fugitive Task Force. Throughout the past month, he's played a critical role, a critical role in apprehending numerous fugitives from the Tampa Bay area. So he's going after the worst of the worst, the most violent in our city, and as you're going to find out, the most violent that actually try to elude our city and our, and our jurisdiction. So um, one apprehension that stands out resulted from an incident that you'll all re recall back in October on the 9th, where we responded to a report of multiple people shot and one deceased at a downtown nightclub. We collected numerous interviews and surveillance videos from the scene, which helped homicide detectives identify two shooting suspects and acquire warrants for their arrest. Between October 19th and the 23rd, Officer Di Stefano was able to track the suspects as they were staying at various locations throughout the state and outside Florida in an attempt to avoid their arrest. On October 23rd, he discovered that one of the suspect's associates and her vehicle were traveling on Interstate 10 into Texas. The vehicle and the driver eventually stopped at a hotel in Brownsville, Texas, which is only a few miles from the Mexico border. And MPO Di Stefano uh, contacted the U.S. Marshals South Task Force and provided them with the case information. The task force was able to do surveillance at the hotel and gained access to surveillance video. The video confirmed that both wanted suspects were staying at the hotel with several other people. On the morning of the 24th, the group was exiting the hotel when the task force was able to safely take two wanted suspects into custody and locating nearly $24,000 hidden in their vehicle. So if it wasn't for Master Police Officer Di Stefano's hard work and tenacity in this case, those two suspects could have made it into Mexico, and uh, thus probably eluding their justice for those violent crimes. So for everything he does, and specifically that case also, he is being awarded our Officer of the Month for December 2022. Thank you.
before, before we hear from you and before we um, hear from City Council and before I formally present this to you, sir, we're going to hear from some members of the public who are here in great appreciation for your work. So go ahead. Good morning, Councilman. Darla Portman, President of the Tampa Police Benevolent Association, Vice President Brandon Barkley, actually President-elect, so he'll be there January 1st. I am very proud of Mike. I get to see Mike in a different way than you guys see him in a way Chief Burkhall explained him. When we have the horrible scenes that our officers have to be a part of, getting into shootings or even having an officer killed, Mike's there. He's there to help out those officers. He's there, part of the team to, with the families. Um, Mike, we really appreciate everything you do, and we're proud to have you as one of our members. Thank you. Special Deputy Officer Michael. I'm Grace Gonzalez. I'm here with the 1905 family of restaurants representing the Gonsmart family. Um, I'm going to present you with a gift card to visit any of our restaurants, which includes any of the seven Columbia restaurant locations, Eulalie, Goody Goody, Casa Santo Stefano, and Cha Cha Coconuts in Sarasota. Please enjoy with your family. Thank you so much for your bravery and your commitment. Morning, Council. Mike MacArthur, Steph Sewing Service Officer. Congratulations. Like Chief said, there's just so many things that the general public doesn't know about. We had no idea that there was a, a division that does the things that you do and makes us glad that we're on your side and, and, and keeping our city safe and just once again proves that this is the greatest police department in the United States. So congratulations on a job well done. On behalf of Todd Steph and Steph Sewing Service, I'd like to present you with a $50 Outback or restaurant of your choice gift card and night out in our company limousine. Take some time off. Enjoy your thank you for everything you do. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Officer Di Stefano. It's my pleasure to meet you. I, on behalf of the Strad Center, I'd like to thank you for all that you do and the support that you bring to crime and solving crime and the most dangerous crimes in our city and the extent to which our great police force is willing to go to apprehend and to find justice for some of the worst crimes, as you say. The Strath Center would like for you to enjoy a show, and thank you very much for your service. Thank you. Good morning, Council. Chief, good morning. Good morning. And good morning, and thank you. What a story. And uh, on behalf of the Glazer family and our entire organization, I'd like to thank you and your family for all your sacrifice and what you do for our community behind the scenes. It's evident with the support that you have here today that you're uh, well respected and well thought and I just want to say thank you. And uh, we have a little tradition where people get game balls when they go over and above and your story definitely represents that. So again, on behalf of our entire organization, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, Council. Leah Van Name with Tampa Theater. Officer, on behalf of Tampa Theater, I'm honored to give you the gift of a membership. I want to say congratulations, and we truly appreciate all your service in our community, especially knowing how close um, the crimes happened to Tampa Theater. So thank you so much, and congratulations. Good morning. I'm Mary Lou Bailey. I'm here on behalf of Zoo Tampa. I serve on the board there, and this is... And I'm Mark Haney with Zoo Tampa. Okay. Thank you so much for your service. This is awesome, the tenacity, the courage. Thank you to everyone who serves in the police force. On behalf of the board, we're um, giving you an annual membership to the zoo, um, and so it's good for a year, and you can take your family and friends, and uh, as Mark said earlier, it's Christmas in the wild right now. I'm kind of into Christmas. So um, uh, go up and enjoy it, and again, thank you so much for your service. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Yes. Sorry. I can't even imagine the logistics that are involved in tracking somebody across that far, and uh, so we're just very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, I'm Steve Michelini, and I appreciate what you do, and uh, certainly we appreciate getting the bad guys off the street. <clears throat> uh, on behalf of the Yummy House China Bistro, we're providing you with a gift certificate. You can enjoy yourself over there for lunch or dinner. On behalf of the Metropolitan YMCA, but it doesn't sound like you need to work out, but uh, you can go over the Y. <clears throat> on behalf of the Meat Market uh, in Old Hyde Park Village, we're providing you with a gift certificate there. 
on the Chicho's Restaurant Group. We're providing you with a gift certificate, breakfast, lunch, or dinner at any one of their places. And on behalf of Bella Brava in the Midtown, we're providing you a gift certificate so you can enjoy yourself there for lunch or dinner. Congratulations and thank you again for your service. Thank you. So it is my great pleasure to present on behalf of Tampa City Council this Tampa City Council commendation to you, sir. Here you go. Thank you so much for your service. We appreciate you. We all do. God bless you. Thank you, sir. If you'd like to speak, you may. Thank you, sir. Um, I just want to thank, thank you for this award. It's very much appreciated. Um, I want to thank the chiefs, majors, all of the Tampa Police staff for the opportunities they gave me and the entrusting me with my position for as long as they have. I want to say thank you to Sergeant John Haggard for putting me in for this award. And I want to thank my squad, mostly. It's always, always a team effort, everything we do. And uh, it's a privilege to work with all of you guys every single day. So thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Miranda. Oh, thank you, sir. I, it's an honor to meet somebody from what I see on TV all the time, CSI or something like that. <laughs> and, and the things that they do there, I see now that you do the same thing or even better. To take somebody from Tampa to Brownfield, Texas, that's got to be 700, 800 miles away, I guess. And uh, the, the, the tenacity of I'm not going to let this one get away is what keeps you going. And when somebody creates a crime, it's a crime not only to that person, but it's a crime to everybody who lives in the city of Tampa because Injury hurts one person, but it filters out through the whole community. And people like to live in a safe, sound community, and you and your police force and everybody in the city of Tampa, it's grateful to have individuals like you serving us, uh, spending your career doing what a lot of people will not do. Thank you so much for you and your family and the time they had to give so that you can go on and catch the people who are not abiding by the law. Muchisima gracias. Councilman Goods. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you. Looking at all that, uh, I thought that was Hagger in the back back there, but I wasn't sure until I called his name. But I don't think the chief gave you the whole story of that of that shooting. Anytime someone dies, it's a tragic. I believe that was a wedding party. I believe the groom that was was, was killed in that that uh, that incident, if I'm not mistaken. So, for a policeman. And I get kind of chills on that. Uh, they, they, they didn't stop. They didn't stop. Anytime a death occurs, it's tragic. But to, and we got that solved in a, in, a, in a good time. So that shows the hard work to apprehend. And I know that family is grateful because like Mr. Miranda said, if that person would have got to Mexico, we might have, would have never found them, ever. Been solved. So for me, and, and happening in my district, and the folks who live on, in downtown, they're grateful for what you've done, what the squad did, and what the marshal service did. So again, uh, job well done, and uh, again, thank you for your hard work. That's one her time. I also want to thank you for your hard work. Um, uh, it's a great story when we can start, you can start from, from you know, a new police officer and build your way up with everything you've learned to this amazing position. It obviously ha it speaks a lot toward what you can do and how you actually can focus to, um, to, to track some of the worst criminals that this city faces. And we really appreciate the way that you do that. Um, it sounds like you are incredibly tenacious and just don't give up until you get what you need or what you want. And we really, really appreciate that. Uh, the city could not, could not function without someone like you. And the residents I know and the family members of, of the person killed are, are greatly appreciative of, of the work you've done. Thank you very much. Congratulations for obviously an award well deserved. Thank you. Councilman Mascot. Congratulations and thank you for your sacrifice and for the sacrifice that your family makes because the job that you do is not easy. Um, and that, you know the story that the, the, the chief read uh, is, is very inspiring because uh, you never stopped, you never gave up and you know the goal was achieved. 
Um, you know, and I'm, and I'm not trying to be funny when I say this, but you remind me of like a Steve McQueen, Clint Eastwood type of, and those are my two personal favorites, but you're the kind of police officer that inspires young people to want to serve and start a career in law enforcement. You're the hero, you and your team, uh, for what you do that uh, inspires other individuals. And I thank you. Um, I think you know, you're the type of person that people look up to. We certainly look up to you. And we thank you again for being tenacious, for being dedicated, for going above and beyond and, and finding the solutions. You're serving the community in a capacity that we don't even know. So we thank you for that. We're very grateful. Congratulations. This is very, very much deserved. Thank you, sir. Councilman Vieira. Oh, he's down there. Councilman Carlson. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, we heard about CSI, and we heard TV show, and we heard about Clint Eastwood. So um, uh, it, it would be great if we could somehow learn more about what, what you do and how you did it. Um, but it's very impressive hearing what you accomplished. And thank you to you and your team. I saw your team in the back earlier. And thank you to all of you for uh, using your brains and uh, resources to, to help protect us every day. Um, and please keep in touch and let us know how we can support you. Thank you. Thank you. The only word I have to describe an officer like you is amazing. To be able to track these fugitives from Tampa all the way to Brownsville, nab them before they cross over with $30,000 cash in their pocket, thinking they're going to make an escape, it's amazing. Thank you for the work you do. Thank you for everything you do for this city. Thank you. people are leaving. Mr. Ford, would you please come up to the podium? Good morning. Mr. Ford, it is not my intention to embarrass you, and I, I don't mean to. Give me one second, Mr. Ford. You, uh, I want to make sure that a lot of people hear this. Ladies and gentlemen, you see Mr. Ford or one of his counterparts come in here to give game day footballs to That's part of my job. fire police ATU. You see him supporting this community. A while ago, Ms. Erlisha Oates called my office and said that she had some young children from Silver Oaks Apartments. Silver Oaks has been in the news a lot lately. The deplorable conditions in which they have to live. She called my office and said, Councilman Citro, I have seven or eight children. And all they want to do is go to a Bucks game. I exhausted every avenue I had to try and get these children to a game. My legislative aide, Tim, exhausted every avenue he had. I made one phone call. One phone call to Mr. Ford. He said, Councilman Citro, I will take care of it. You came through. Those children enjoyed the day at an amazing time. Thank you for the things that you do in this council chambers, thank you for everything you do for people that receive accommodations. Thank you for the things that you do for the city of Tampa. Mr. Ford, congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you, but thank you guys for all that you do and for allowing us to do and the leadership that you provide our community. So best of holidays to everyone and thank you very much and stay safe. Thank yes. you. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Councilman Goose. 
Uh, Brian, as you can see how, how uh, happy Miss Phyllis was when she got that ball. That's why I thought it was not robbery for all of our employees, not just police and fire, but everyone who goes above and beyond to be recognized as well. And I want to thank you and the Glaciers and Buccaneers for seeing uh, that it was not robbery to do that. And as you can see, we've given out like, about three of them out so far, and everyone's been just as, as happy as they can be. So again, thank you for what you've done for our ATU as well, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much, and it's the best part of my job. And on behalf of the Glazer family and our entire organization, thank you very much for allowing us to, to be a part of this. So thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs> Mr. Richards. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Uh, what a hard act to follow. I mean, coming behind that is truly amazing, and I'm honored. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of council, good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Um, as you know, we're operating under a new contract this year, and we've worked really hard to deliver everything in the scope of this contract. And today I'll briefly highlight some of the results of the past fiscal year. And I think we have a, a PowerPoint presentation. And it's up there. It's up there running. There we go. There we go. So let me start by uh, first bringing you greetings. How does this work? OK. There we go. No, that's the whole uh, report. I need the PowerPoint presentation. IT. If I went through this whole report, we'd be here all morning. So <laughs> I want to do a brief report and be respectful of your time. No, this is the whole report. This, this is what the PowerPoint looks like. <laughs> this doesn't count against me this time, right? Okay. <laughs> All we need is the man in the red hat to stand over there. <laughs> what a great presentation with all the, the accolades from those employees and the officer. Truly inspiring. I think it's great that you guys recognize them like that, too. Have to. As I mm -hmm. said, we're all family. That's right. Got to recognize family members. <laughs> Tim, are you out there? <coughs> We're close. And had I known we were supposed to wear our fancy holiday gear, I would have I would have dressed accordingly. 
I, it looks as if Miss Her Councilwoman Hertock is the only one dressed festive. <laughs> all right. While we're waiting, I think all of us should uh, say what we have on our Christmas wish list. Hey. And I'll go first. <laughs> I want a 1968 Camaro SS silver with black racing stripes convertible. You'll shoot your eye out. <laughs> Anybody else? No? All right, <laughs> just a thought. Well, I, I gave my Christmas wish list. Do you have a Christmas wish list? 68 Camaro SS. 68 Camaro SS. SS. Silver with black racing stripes convertible. All right. Thank you. <laughs> One Santa says I've been good, and then one of his helpers said I've been bad, so. Close. Something's happening. <laughs> there we go. Is that what you're looking at? Is that what you're looking for? Can you see it? <laughs> Nothing's coming up on my screen. Because we can see it. Yep, now it's up. That's why 2022 Yep, that's it. That's it. All right. All right, well, let's, let's, let's get cracking on this. All right. So, let me bring some uh, greetings from our executive officers. Uh, we're proud to have this distinguished lineup of business and community leaders that serve as our executive officers for this fiscal year. Uh, you'll notice uh, our chair is Angel Gonzalez. He's the market president of South State Bank. Our vice chair is Joe Lapano, who's the president and CEO of America's favorite airport. Uh, our secretary treasurer is Ron Cristaldi, who's the president of Shoemaker Advisors. And our general counsel is Ben Dachapelli who's a partner with uh, Bradley. So despite this uncertain post-pandemic environment, I'm pleased to report that we closed 22 projects this fiscal year. And these companies have plans to create 2,663 new jobs and invest $105 million in capital investment. There we go. And um, this represents 118% uh, of our new jobs goal and 105% of our capital investment goal of 105 million. And these are all the companies that we assisted this year. And of these 22 projects, 15 were actually new companies to the market, seven were local expansions, and we also were able to add seven new corporate headquarters to this growing list of headquarters in the Tampa and Hillsborough County. And we had two foreign direct investment projects, uh, Swiss based in PECO, which is a global leader in clinical laboratory automation, and Clarify, a UK based tech sales and marketing organization. And I'm also going to tell you a little bit about some of the trends that we saw this year in, ter in terms of our projects. We saw a growth in the distribution and logistics uh, sector with five of the 22 projects that we closed in this sector. And we continue to see a lot of technology and healthcare and life science and uh, professional services related projects as well. So Expand Tampa Bay is the brand of our business retention and expansion program. And as all of you know, as local business leaders, uh, local businesses is where the job growth occurs. So we surveyed about 150 companies, and, uh, and they represent about 39,000 employees. And this program and the company and survey uh, provided some key insights to our team, and I want to share some of those insights with you. First, our targeted industries are thriving. 
Of those 150 companies that we surveyed, 67% reported an increase in sales year over year. Second, most are planning for growth. So 53% said that they intended to expand in the next three years and create an estimated 6,000 new jobs and invest $300 million in capital investment. Third, the greatest job demand is coming from the financial services sector, IT, and manufacturing sectors. And we wanted to share, uh, find out what some of the challenges that they were facing were. And so we asked, what is the largest barrier to growth? 55% said talent, the availability of skilled quality talent. And that's something not only that we're facing, but other places across the country are facing as well. 13% sales growth. And then 7% said supply chain, which is you know, no surprise given the effect that the pandemic has had on the global economy. Make It Tampa Bay is a national talent attraction campaign uh, that we do in partnership with Visit Tampa Bay and is funded by Hillsborough County. Talent attraction and development continues to be a major focus for us, especially since this is the most important factor that companies consider when they're deciding to expand or relocate somewhere. This paid campaign targets talent in Chicago, Boston, and New York City, and it delivered more than 11 million impressions and over-delivering by more than 1.3 million impressions. It also drove significant new traffic to the Make It Tampa Bay website. And additional campaigns on social media channels delivered another 2 million impressions. Our community development director, and I keep up to say that he's new, but he's not new anymore. He's been on, on staff now for about a little over a year, Tony Brown, is identifying ways to market our opportunity zones and explore how we can have an impact in underserved neighborhoods like East Tampa. He's been busy meeting with dozens of community partners and City of Tampa staff on this effort. And as part of our placemaking strategy, one of our goals is to drive catalytic projects that will enhance our competitiveness as a destination for business and talent and focus on our inclusive economic uh, growth prosperity strategies. Our first order of business was to commission a competitiveness study that examined how the Tampa MSA matched up against some of our larger metros, uh, specifically in our targeted industries. We formed a competitiveness committee and to, uh, to leverage the study findings and to identify challenges and areas of opportunity that the EDC could prioritize for action and incorporate into our new strategic plan. And with the funds raised in our first year of our capital campaign, the Tampa Bay Economic Prosperity Foundation began implementing our inclusive economic growth initiative, which was created to bring jobs and capital investment to East Tampa, Central Park, Ybor City, and Uptown, and raise awareness of training opportunities. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So working in partnership with Councilman Goods, Community and business leaders, we started crafting a vision to vi uh, revitalize an industrial corridor in East Tampa. The premise is to locate quality jobs in the area to spur economic prosperity for residents in the area. So we hired GAI's Community Solutions Group to assist in the crafting of this vision, of course, in keeping with the CRA's goals and objectives. And, um, and so we wanted to explore establishing some boundaries for this particular district and corridor so that we can focus our efforts in that area, recommend potentially some architectural guidelines, suggest some infrastructure uh, upgrades, identify real estate opportunities for the new location of uh, USF Smart Manufacturing and Innovation Institute, as well as the Black Business Investment Fund Makerspace. These are all things that we're working towards and working with uh, your staff and uh, leaders in the area to accomplish. And we held a workshop at J.C. Newman uh, offices on November 9th, and I want to thank Councilman Goose for attending and, and bringing uh, words of encouragement there. 
to engage the business and property owners of East Tampa to get their feedback and input on future economic development activities. So we launched a uh, pilot career awareness campaign this year, and it's called CERT UP. And the, the idea is to bring awareness to local residents about short-term programs that will train them for high-demand jobs in fields such as cybersecurity, welding, and healthcare. And so when you drive through East Tampa, you'll see some colorful billboards. And if you live in the area, you'll see some ads running on the television, radio, and social media. And I'm going to show you a really quick uh, <coughs> commercial spot that we produce for that. See if that works. Didn't work. Oh well. You can go to our YouTube channel and, and, and see it. But it's a, a quick 30 minute spot that talks about some of these uh, opportunities and it encourages people to take the training and, uh, and, and level up and cert up uh, for careers. So, uh, in June, we held a ceremony at HCC and to award $25,000 in scholarships, and we want to thank AT&T for that. And we awarded these scholarships to 13 students uh, from our targeted neighborhoods to assist them in completing their cybersecurity training. So, this, uh, this new contract and our new strategic plan encouraged the EDC to get engaged in more non-traditional economic development. And today was just a snapshot of some of those results. I encourage you to look at our annual report uh, for more details. Uh, and finally, uh, anybody that's heard me say and speak about economic, economic development has heard me say that economic development is a team sport. And uh, we certainly could not do this without your support. And uh, Nicole and her team, the mayor's partnership and vision. And, uh, and I just want to thank all of you for, for all that you do and the leadership that you provide as well. And so uh, I may have gone over my allotted time, Mr. Chair, and, uh, but I don't want to miss this opportunity to wish all of you uh, happy holidays and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank Same you. to you, mm -hmm. Councilman Goods. Well, Craig, uh, I want to say uh, thank you for the presentation first and foremost. Like I always tell people, you don't have to like somebody to get results. I don't care who likes me or not, I'm looking for results. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Carlson, you know, came in and he had some questions about your organization and something I didn't know about. So now we, he enlightened all of us to be looking to research what the EDC does. Mm -hmm. And that's when I reached out to your office and said, hey, if a council member is saying what we should be doing, why aren't we doing it, then we need to get it done. And that's when you uh, and your group took the leadership role to go out and call me and say, we need to go to East Tampa now. We need to look and see the areas that we can bring economic development. That's right. uh, again, I'm happy that your team did that, that you're working with our team here uh, and our CRAs as well. And again, it's not liking anybody. It's just getting the job done. That's right. Getting the job done. And I appreciate that. Some of the photos that council may have seen, uh, that's showing me taking the extra step because that is at the uh, CRA conference. Thank you. Most photos. So that tells me that you, 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 your team went out to, on a limb to go out and say, what is it that communities are asking and, and what are they wanting? Uh, and by doing that, you went to the CRA conference to find out and, yeah. and, and uh, have, have meetings. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that we're trying to, again, uh, put our best foot forward uh, to help a blighted area. Uh, so we got USF coming, possibly coming on board, do some things. I know we got the BBIF. I've met with them as mm -hmm. well. Uh, they are doing great things in Jacksonville, in Orlando, and That's other right. places. So I'm glad you guys have reached out to those folks to see how we can collaboratively work together to really bring some positive change to our area and an economic <coughs> impact in our workforce. Uh, and housing as well, uh, be a part of that, uh, that, that goal as well. So I just want to say thank you for taking the extra step uh, and your team working, working, like I say, hard to bring something to this council so we, you can say, we can say that when we're signing something for your organization to get, to get a check, that you're doing what we ask you to do. Thank and you. that's just coming from me because you've done what I've asked you to do. Thank so you. again, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Councilman Hurtak. 
Um, yes, uh, I do want to also say thank you for this. Uh, I love the fact that this was um, uh, focused in East Tampa. I think that was pretty cool. Uh, <clears throat> all I'm reading now is about the, the lack of talent, and that really just has to do with numbers. Right. Like, we, we just don't have enough um, Gen Z, and uh, we just we don't have a, enough people. So <clears throat> I think, uh, and I, I just saw something I want to say yesterday that said that Tampa is, is an area where we're not going to see that, young, that youth growth, hmm. um, that we, we have a, a much older population. Um, so it, it is of, of great importance that we really focus on getting the people who already live here and the young people the, the training that it's going to take mm -hmm. to fill these jobs. And so I like to see, I like seeing that you're, that you're starting with this you. and I want to see what, what you're going to do next um, because Finally, we're getting jobs that aren't just call center jobs. We're getting jobs, like actual jobs that make livable wages. Um, or, you know, and that have areas for growth. Mm -hmm. So not dead end jobs. And so th this is very exciting, but I, I wanna see what, I mean, what are the plans for next year? Like, how are we going to build upon what started in East Tampa? How are we gonna include um, areas in, you know, West Tampa or, uh, and, and reaching out to the high schools, making sure that we are we are really, really pulling in our homegrown talent and encouraging them to stay here um, with the cost of housing and insurance right. and all of this, it's gonna be really hard to do that. So I'm really Absolutely. looking forward to seeing um, what what's next. Good. So thank, thank you. you for this. This is a thank good you. start. Appreciate it. Councilman Metascalco. Thank you for your presentation, you. and I'm glad that East Tampa was brought up because, as I mentioned the other day to a, a, a group of people, it's the land that time forgot. The rest yeah. of the city, much of the city has flourished, but if you look at East Tampa, it's uh, an area, our largest CRA is there, which there's specific tax dollars, specific investments, but it's ripe for growth and opportunity and lifting the community up and providing that part of the city, the equity that the other part of the city is is um, enjoying and being able to uh, be a part of. Um, but Councilwoman Hertak, Councilmember uh, Goods brought it up, you know, jobs, good paying wages where people can live and work in that community, buy a home in that community, right. invest in that community. Uh, the rising tide lifts all boats. You know, it's all boats in the city of Tampa. Everybody rises with it. And as we see so many new people moving here, and it's not just you know Tom Brady and the Buccaneers or <laughs> talks of sports, it's the investment that's coming to this community, but it should be spread across the board. Because if you go, and I use the borders like uh, east of the interstate, east of the interstate, you know, you go down Hillsborough, you go down Martin Luther King, you go down the other streets, and it, and it changes <clears throat> completely. And we're, you know, they, they deserve to have what everybody else has, a strong middle class, uh, people that can afford to live in the community, but grow and, and start a family and let it be multi, continue letting it be multi-generational. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, Tampa is succeeding in so many other places, but we need to spread it across the entire city and leave no one behind. So Agreed. thank you very much. A very good presentation and thank you. Uh, Merry Christmas to you. Sir. Thank you, Merry Christmas. Gus Vera. Thank you, sir. And uh, four words, uh, university area and Sulphur Springs, uh, all, also yes. the, the North Tampa area as well. Uh, something that, that is, is like East Tampa and other, in parts of West Tampa, Councilman Hertak mentioned, very much so left behind. I think that mm -hmm. y'all's biggest challenge is the, the aforementioned areas, as well as what I call just the post-COVID economy, which in the city of Tampa and in the Tampa area is helping to uh, make security, certainly within the city of Tampa and then within our surrounding areas mm -hmm. for the middle class uh, unattainable. It, it just is. If you're, if you're poor, you're going to find it very, very difficult with a post-COVID economy. It goes without saying working class blue collar. And now we're seeing the middle class being <coughs> shut out of our city of Tampa economy with a number of different challenges that have arisen. I think that's y'all's uh, uh, biggest challenge is the question of in a post-COVID economy, how are we going to make Tampa accessible. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, uh, what is that saying? Don't New York my Tampa, whatever. <laughs> but the, the big thing is don't Miami our Tampa, yeah. uh, which is in terms of the, um, 
the cost of living. And, and we're inching ourselves closer to that. And the post-COVID economy has really accelerated that movement. And I think that's just the, the biggest challenge that I think that we see. But I thank you for all that you do. And Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Merry Christmas to you. Councilman Miranda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Richard, for your thank fine you. uh, reporting and, and, and the mannerism that you and your staff have in, in doing these things. It's a very difficult task because just to say you're the Economic Development Council means something, but to who? Right. So what it is, for so many years, there was dormancy. Hmm. There were no jobs coming in and people going to college here and going to live somewhere else. That's right. Now it has reversed. Yeah. For whatever reason, the hard times, bad times, and good times, some individuals like yourself or your agencies <coughs> and other agencies have brought people in. Hmm. Uh, Tampa is still one of the highest ranking right now of rooms rented in the whole country. It's mm -hmm. one or two at 88% rental mm -hmm. in, in hotels and motels. That's right. So what does that tell you? That the people want to come in, they want to look. Everybody's got to say, oh my God, look at this city. I never knew this was like this. And those are the things that start out. It wasn't in 1970s. The only thing that was downtown was 600 people and six others. Six <laughs> that were in jail and six others were waiting to get a bed in jail. Yeah. And Bill Post started what they call the quad block across the street. That's how it started. So you're looking at a lot of years, they're like 50 or something. Mm. And when those things happen, it takes an enormous amount of individuals to enormous amount of capital to create the capital that we're creating now. Mm. All of us, not you, not me, right. not the council, not the mayor. It's a community effort it's a team that sport. we're not going to stay mm. behind. The only thing downtown at that time was the stress center, one of them. And if it wasn't for HCC and the Sheriff Department, there may never have been an Ebor City re revitalization. Those are the things that people forget. Then the streetcar got, of course, came in and people criticized it. And we say, if you put it down the corridors, people will come. And look at it now. If the ridership is up, I mean, when you look at those things, look at the zoo's attendance. It broke. All records, a million two hundred thousand people visited the zoo last year. Mm -hmm. If you put that with the aquariums about a million, that's more people that's in Hillsborough County and Pinellas County combined. Mm -hmm. I, I believe it's close to it anyway. So what does that tell you? Something is happening here that people are saying, there's where we want to go. And it takes a concerted effort, not only from government, right. but takes it from industry, from educators that we have, from people that are doing from hospitals, from the care that they can receive. And those are the things that people want for their family. Mm -hmm. However, you gotta be very vigilant of the fact that you always gotta keep an eye on things that you don't want to get out of hand mm -hmm. because that could also fall right quickly. But thank you and your organization for what you've done and continue to do. My hat's off to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? I, I, Councilman I, Carlson. I think my opinions of the EDC are well known. Um, we've discussed it several times over the years. Over the next few months, we have uh, the chance to think about how we want to spend our 550000 or so dollars, whether we want to uh, take uh, that money in-house and expand the, the economic development department of the city or whether we want to continue to invest in this organization. Um, my concerns over the years, which I pointed out in great detail, uh, are about the accountability of the numbers and the, and the claims. Uh, the presentation is great. The longer report is great. Uh, one of the questions that we asked when we redid the contract is how many of these companies actually fulfilled on their promises and they wouldn't accept uh, tracking those companies as part of it. I'd like to know the companies that have, that have been taken through this process over the last four years, did they actually hire that many people and did they make that investment? An anecdotal analysis by an intern I had a couple years ago showed that a lot of them had not. Um, so I, I, what I would appreciate is more transparency. A couple years ago, before we started asking questions, their board wasn't listed on their, um, on their website. And there was a lack of respect for city council uh, because technically they reported to the mayor's office and um, uh, um, uh, they, they didn't want to report to city council. They didn't listen to putting the uh, board members on the website. Finally, Carol Post pushed them and they did that. Um, in our contract a year ago, or, or almost a year ago, we said that they should come before city council and give an update. The reason why they're presenting today is because I asked Nicole why they weren't fulfilling the, co the contract obligations. So although it's a great p presentation, um, I, would, I would say we need to hold this organization accountable and uh, the pretty pictures and nice names and numbers are not enough. We need to continue to do that. Um, also, I don't know how many of you have been reached out to 
in the last three and a half years, sounds like uh, Council Member Goods has. I have not. I have about 30 years of experience at economic development and not a, they've invited me to events, but they've not invited me to have any kind of briefing whatsoever. Uh, when we're, if the rest of you have not been invited, that should it, at least be a thing that they should do out of respect uh, to in individually brief us and talk to us about what's going on. I hope that we can have a better conversation uh, with them going forward. They've got some great people like Joe Lepano, uh, Ron Cristaldi, Ben Dutch Polly on their, on their board executive committee, and um, I, I know they're great and honorable people. Look forward to working with them to try to make sure that this investment is a, a, a good and positive investment uh, for the people of Tampa. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Gospel good. Second bite. Uh, Ms. Travis? <coughs> we all respect you, and uh, you've been doing a great job, and I, uh, and I knew uh, Craig well as well, and some of the concerns that one of the council members has, uh, maybe that could be a conversation uh, again, since you're the new economic development officer, mm -hmm. and be a conversation to, uh, you know, see that Mr. Carlson's concerns are heard, and maybe uh, again, uh, putting our best foot forward, getting and ironing those kinks out, and so we can have the best we can have, and also with your leadership, uh, with uh, <coughs> Ms. Richardson, uh, give it a better boost. Uh, that were all concerns of her and, and apply. So if sure. you could do that, Ms. Richard, I don't think that'd be a problem with Craig. Uh, we that we greatly appreciate. It. Thank you. We've already started uh, communicating. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Richards and I talk, speak regularly, um, and we've also acknowledged that the contract is coming up for renewal, and so there may be opportunities for us to um, refine some of the reporting mechanisms. But we have a great working relationship, and we'll continue to work towards that to be responsive to whatever this council's pleasure is moving forward. Thank you. Second by Councilor Carlson. <clears throat> yeah, I forgot one thing. The other thing is, uh, three years ago, um, there was great concern when this organization changed its name to Tampa Bay, and we, as City Council, voted to ask them not to, and got kind of a not so nice letter back. Um, I understand that it's great for marketing for this organization, but I, I regularly talk to economic development officials throughout the region, and it is having a disastrous effect on the Tampa Bay brand. What's happening is that our partners in the region are not using the term Tampa Bay as much, and this decision by itself could end up destroying a brand that has been worked on for 30 years by many organizations. And I, city council may not have as much power as the mayor, and we're only one or maybe the biggest investor in the EDC, but I would just encourage them again to look at the regional impact of this. If all of these products are named Tampa Bay, um, within 20 years, Tampa Bay will not be a term that will be used in Pinellas or St. Peter, Pasco anymore. Um, it's it's a major decision that we have to consider. It's not like naming an airport that's the, that's a dominant airport in the region. It is seen by Pinellas and Pasco as a in others as a uh, land grab. Thank you, Councilman Miranda. I'm not involved in Anybody? any of this. I don't know too much about anything, mm -hmm. but somehow we make it through. I was never in favor of anything being called Tampa Bay. The Bay is Tampa Bay. There you go. And people always say, you got to like the Tampa Bay? No. I said, well, send it to the zip code at Tampa Bay, see where the mail goes to. <laughs> and that's all. I don't tell them anything else. But do I like everything being called Tampa Bay? No, but when you are a regional concept thing, what's the name of the football team? Tampa Bay Buccaneers. What's the name of the Lightning? Tampa Bay Lightning. I think they'll be closed in 20 years then. That's what I heard. But it's not that, is that everybody has their own identity. And I understand what you're saying. Everybody, is it called St. Pete Bay? No. Is it called Clearwater Bay? No. Is it called Sarasota Bay? No. Is it called Manatee Bay? No. So the word Tampa, forget about the rest of it, that came in, and I hate to say this because I'm going to get criticized by everybody in the media. Came in from a newspaper that wanted to do that. Hmm. And I told that newspaper when they put their name on that building, don't spend your money, you're going to need it. That's what happened. And they wanted to make inclusive. And I understand that. But you can't just say that everybody thinks you were elected in the city of Tampa Bay. There is no city called Tampa Bay. But if somebody is, how many Tampa Bay's electric company, Tampa Bay's plumbing company, you got everything Tampa Bay. So are they all going to close? I don't think so. And, but I understand it's a name, it's a brand. There's 
no legal, and I'm not a lawyer either, but there's no legal that somebody can't call themselves Tampa Bay. Right. I would imagine now when we say Tampa Bay, some kid's going to be born, they're going to name him or her <laughs> Tampa Bay. <laughs> because there's a new name. So these are the things that are going on now in life. Everybody wants to be a copycat of something. Mm. But uh, I don't mean that to be disrespectful to anyone, but it's just the way life is. But Tampa is Tampa, and Tampa is still the prominent. I'm not bragging about it, but you look at the airport, you look at other things, and Tampa needs a lot of help. It needs help now. The growth is coming here. Our roads are in terrible shape, and we have to do something to do that, but also at the same time we're doing the pipe program. You can't break a street, fill it up, unless the pipes are under there. there there's a lot of things that are going on. And, and those things will be addressed very shortly. But thank you again, and uh, let's see what happens. Your report stands on what you've done, and that's all you can say. I mean, you. you can't say you're a 300 hitter you never played baseball. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's how it is. Understood. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> Councilor Roland Hurt, Um Second bite. Mr. Miranda uh, made a, made a uh, said something that just reminded me. Um, in your presentation, you talked about Tampa and Hillsborough County. Mm -hmm. How much work do you do in Hillsborough County versus Tampa? We do all of our work in Hillsborough County. Well, but, but within the city limits, <coughs> because if we're putting $550,000, I want to make sure it's only going to Tampa. Um, within the results, I think the last time that we, we negotiated how to report the metrics, you, we have a column on all the projects that are in Tampa. And then, of course, a lot of these community development initiatives are in Tampa. So I don't have a percentage for you, but you know, we do have a partnership with both Hillsborough County and the city of Tampa. And you know, it's for fees, it's for services for fees. And uh, we deliver on those services. And so what you have before you is, you know, all the things that we've uh, negotiated in the contract to deliver for you. Um, and how much does Hillsborough County? Um, Roughly the same. It, both of them okay. are about 500000 apiece. Okay. There's some, one maybe four fifty, one one maybe 550 Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I want to bring it back into your, uh, your presentation. <laughs> yes. You're saying that we don't have the talent, or we're searching for the talent. Right. I've got USF, University of Tampa, St. Leo College, and ACC. Why aren't we keeping our talent here? That's number one. Number two, uh, manufacturing jobs. We've got the 10th deep, tenth largest deep water port right outside our doors. Why aren't we having manufacturing in and around the port area so that we can ship things in and out of? We got the number one airport in the country, right down the street. Manufacturing can ship in and out of the, the airport. We get to children who are graduating, excuse me, young adults who are graduating mm -hmm. high school. They can't afford a car, and they can't get to these areas of training because we have no transportation system. That's our Achilles heel. We have no transportation. Tampa is the hub for this region of transportation, land, sea, and air. And if we can't get workers from their home to their jobs, if we can't get students from their home to their learning places, we're failing. If this referendum ever comes back up again, I'm hoping that you all are going to support our transportation referendum so we can move people and not vehicles in the city of Tampa. I thank you again for your presentation. Thank you. you have wonderful <laughs> holidays. Thank you, Councilman. Happy holidays to thank all you. of you. Thank you. At this time, we'll be taking public comment. If there is anyone in chambers that wishes to give public comment at this time, would you please form a line to my left, your right. Sir, if you'd like to start off, please come forward. Good morning, uh, Chairman and the rest of the uh, Tampa City Council. 
This is my first time actually even speaking to this, this chamber. So Please obviously I'm- state your name. My name is Ellsworth Williams. I'm President CEO for Veterans Council and Veterans. And it's uh, 3810 West Kennedy Boulevard. Thank you. And I, of course, I'm a veteran, and I, my main focus normally is uh, veteran suicide, military sexual trauma, and veterans' family. This here is different because everybody knows the thing is a event called it's a event called Wreath Across America. Wreath Across America is a, is a day where we, all the veteran organizations, or most of the veteran organizations, get together and they put a wreath on a tombstone of a veteran that died. Doesn't matter if it's combat or, or whatever, just as long as they died. I'm here because. What if that veteran didn't have a tombstone to put, to put the reef on? And that is the case, if you were an vet, African-American veteran and during the segregation, you came, you came to home to a city that the cemeteries were integrated. There's only two African-American cemeteries at the time. And why is that important? Because there was no room. If there's no room in that plot, guess what? You don't get a marker and it may be five or six buried deep with no, with no name. So what I, what I decided to do, it, I am sponsoring Gamma Eta Sigma, Phi Beta Sigma, Sorry, sir. Uh, we're, we are having a Reef Across America uh, event on the 17th of um, December at 9 o'clock, and it's two parts, and the city plays a big part in the second part. What I found in the cemetery, there is actually a memorial that says Florida Negroes, World War veterans, dedicated May 30th, 1923. What we're going to do is we're going to take four reefs, and they're going to represent time periods. War, uh, Civil War, World War I, World War II, and this Korean War, we're gonna, we're gonna place these on the reefs, and we're gonna take these four reefs at 11 o'clock, and we're gonna put them alongside that memorial. And it's called re re reunification. We're actually bringing brothers and sisters who, who fought during um, um, segregation and didn't have a marker to veterans who have, have a marker, we're gonna bring them together to try to heal that wound. So I'm just here to let you know about that, educate you that, and if you, I know, as we know, uh, everybody's doing uh, Reef Corps America in different places, but uh, if you're available, if you, please spread the word. For this, and we have a, um, Admiral Chamber. His name is Admiral Lawrence Chamber. He was he uh, as a second African American that actually graduated from Naval Academy, and he's going to be a guest speaker because he's going to give us the context about what what it took to you know what, during that time frame. And we got a lot more other special guests that are, are going to be there. So, anyway, I just want to let you guys know about it to educate you about this this thing that I'm I'm concerned about, and that we should um, not. And one of our things that and, and Councilman knows about this, we do not forget. And we do not leave a veteran behind, and we're not going to do this Saturday, December 17th at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock at the cemetery. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Councilman Vera. Thank you, and, I know, and thank you. I, I never speak or rarely speak during public comment, but Ellsworth is a friend, and I, I, I just wanted to say hi and thank you for all that you do. You're, you're such a wonderful uh, influence and, and whatnot in our community, and this is a really holy cause. I'll be there at, at, at 11 o'clock on Saturday, and it's such an important issue. You know, a, a lot of folks don't know, and you know this, that a lot of our civil rights <laughs> heroes were uh, veterans. Yeah. Medgar Evers was in Normandy. He would go on to be killed uh, 20 years later. Uh, Hosea Williams, who was in Selma, was a Purple Heart recipient. Ralph Abernathy, Reverend Ralph, and, and, and the list goes on and on and on. So I, I just commend you for that, and just I just wanted to give you a shout out for all that you do. You're a good guy, and I'm proud to be your friend. Thank, Thank you, sir. Mr. Chair? Councilman Goods. Mr. El, if you could go into the office next door and get the information so my, uh, my aide can get that information. I was just going to ask Tim is standing right outside the door. All sir, right. if you could give my legislative aide your information, we'll pass it on to all the council members. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. I'd like to have that filed and received. So move. We have a motion made by Councilman Miranda, seconded by Councilman Goods. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good morning. My name is Bishop Michelle B. Patty. Two weeks ago, I came before this council asking that there be uh, transparency and accountability before $100,000 be released to the NAACP. Uh, in this chamber, there was an executive board member of the NAACP along with a, a person who stated that 
they do not, we do not, we do not tell on our own people even if they are killed. Not one of you members denounced that. Not even the member who represent East Tampa said anything to that. I found it offensive, I found it appalling, and I came this morning to let you know that 99.9% .9 of black people do not subscribe to that ignorant statement. Secondly, I would like to point out that you all need to take a firm stand. Hear this organization rise up for peace who has been recognized in this chamber. On that executive board member, you see that on her Facebook, she has targeted that organization, myself, my church, my family, trying to make the community think that we are snitches. What we are, we're a law-abiding citizen who have great pain because our children have been murdered. The city nor the mayor give this organization not one dollar. They risk their lives out here in the community trying to stop the gun violence. You have never seen the NAACP hold up a banner or anything denouncing the murders of our people. In the last five days, four people have been murdered. Just night before last, on Sunday morning at 11 a.m., instead of people going to church, here we had a killing. A young lady was killed in West Tampa. We see that a young man who it was the station manager of WTMP, he was targeted because he have a job. His job was to manage the station. I pay for my talk show, what's really happening, that comes on every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. This young man, as you see, this was put on this executive board member, uh, Facebook, there's a lot of nastiness that's going on on her Facebook page, but she is an executive member of this civil rights organization. This is not the same civil rights organization of yesteryear. It has been hijacked by people that means this community no good. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Goods. Uh, just for this council for the record, you know I've been on TV several times talking about, I don't believe uh, uh, the snitching code. I believe if someone hurts someone, they should be punished or captured. I've always said that. The record to prove it on TV. Uh, people know I'm very upset about what happened in West Tampa. I was at the CRE meeting the other night because the cameras were not operable for whatever reason. Uh, people know how I feel about violence. I'll still denounce violence at all times to anyone, anytime. Uh, I know there's a lot of stuff going back and forth with the radio station, some other organization in the NAACP. Uh, you know, I have not engaged in that because I believe that the national office is here to investigate, do whatever they're going to do. I believe several council members went and uh, went on uh, Sunday, I believe, to hear what they had to say and were questioned about what our roles in this city are. So just for the record, uh, I don't believe uh, any, anyone hurting anyone. I believe in justice, and I believe people should to try to get along. Again, I don't have to like someone, but I respect anybody in their, in, their, in their place. Again, I don't have to like anyone, but I want to respect any and every person, regardless who they are. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And if you roll back the tape two weeks ago, no one said a word when it was uttered here in this chamber. That should have been done. Mentez not. I want to say Uhuru. Uhuru means freedom in Swahili. I want to say to all the people in Tampa, and especially in the hood, Queen Buffoon. Nothing more, nothing less. Queen Mr. Daniel, Buffoon. Mr. Daniel. Nothing more, nothing less. Please, we will not talk about anyone. Please address counsel. Yes, I'm addressing counsel. Thank you. Okay? For anybody to do what they're doing, some people can't accept criticism. Counsel can't accept criticism, so they set themselves up. Oh, you can't call by name, you can't do this, you can't do that. I ain't gonna call y'all by names. Let me call y'all by white people. All white people you see are pimps, nothing more, nothing less. 
They pimp Africans. They pimp buffoons. They pimp buffoons like me. They pimp queen buffoons. They pimp any buffoon they can get. They can pimp you talking about violence and snitching, but they can't talk about the gun manufacturers. They can't talk about the white gun manufacturers. They can't talk about reparations. Queen buffoon can't talk about reparations. Queen buffoon got on a radio show and say, oh, Mr. he Daniel, down there begging for Ms. people. Mr. Daniels, I ask you to please refrain from talking about anyone. Talk to counsel. Yes, sir, I'm going to talk Thank about you. counsel. I'm going to talk to counsel. People get on places and talk about they teach their children how to work. They don't teach them about reparations because reparations is like begging buffoons, Negro buffoons all over the world. You can see them. And white people are pimps, human traffickers, been pimping us for 622 years. Keep the confusion going amongst us because they know that's the game they run. I ain't got nothing against this lady, and I ain't got nothing against no black lady, and I ain't got nothing against no black person on this planet Earth because our enemies, our enemies, our adversaries are the white folks that's sitting right there that got black people coming down here begging for $15,000, $1,500, or MF and speed bumping their community to stop the gun violence, to stop the drugs. Noriega, Oliver North, Poindexter, George Bush, Ronald Reagan, they're the ones bringing the drugs. They're the ones that was bringing the drugs. And our youth getting locked up. Our youth getting locked up. Our parents in jail. Our kids are in prisons. And the white people, they are pimps, nothing more, nothing less. Human traffickers. Pimp and human traffic billions of African people since 1400. And you talk about decorum and all the stupidity you talk about, like y'all some kind of kings sitting up there as y'all railroad African people and do us wrong on a daily basis and expect us to expect that. Y'all expect black people to expect mistreatment. Y'all expect the confusion. I love the sister. Known the sister for decades. Can't create no confusion. And anybody talking about a black person criminal record Every black person on this planet Earth, proud of our criminal record. We're proud of it because that meant we seen that side. And like Martin Luther King, see, we seen the other side. We seen the mountaintop. That's what we seen. Thank you. Next, please. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair and uh, council and staff. Uh, my name is Sean Wilson. I'm the president of Blue Sky Communities uh, with offices at 180 Fountain Parkway in St. Petersburg. We did move just to the other side of the Howard Franklin. I am still a City of Tampa homeowner, of course. Uh, Blue Sky Communities wants to express its appreciation to the city, um, especially to the staff that we're working with in uh, pursuit of an affordable housing community called the Adderley Apartments. This is on the corner of uh, Nebraska and Bush, and I've, I think I've been here uh, in front of you guys before to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, today, um, you're going to be voting on item number 48. Excuse me, I'm oh, sorry, hang sir. Hang, hang, hang. Uh, hang. Is this what, a what, rezoning coming before us or something? What number is this? Is this on the agenda? You're talking about something? Item number 48 on the consent agenda. Number 48 on the consent agenda. Yep. He's good. He's good. Thank you, sir. You can. Right. Please, please proceed. So, um, I'm here to express appreciation in regard for uh, the vote that's about to occur today on item 48 on the consent agenda. Uh, we've been uh, working closely with staff and they've uh, been very cooperative and you guys should be really proud of, of the work that they've done. I'm talking about Kayon Henderson, <coughs> talking about Michelle Boone, other folks in that department. I'm talking about Re Rebecca Johns in the city attorney's office. And, um, and we're, we're just uh, finishing up our work with Mr. Hutchison, the building official, and uh, we will be uh, closing those loans and starting construction uh, in the first quarter of next year and really looking forward to delivering 128 units of affordable housing to the citizens of uh, the city of Tampa. So thank you very much and have a happy holiday and a safe new year. Thank you. Councilwoman Herpach. Um, I, you answered part of my question. Um, I wanted to say um, uh, thank you for the, the work you're doing and congratulations. 128 units um, 
What size units? It's a mix of one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom. Okay. And um, what is there a focus of the, a particular type of uh, group that can live there? Can anyone live there? Or? It's the, the only uh, restriction is income base. So there's no special demographic focus. Um, there, there's a few units that will be referred from a special needs referral agency, a few. Um, other than that, it's open to the general public. And um, I would add that the, that the funding that we're receiving from the city, which is generously provided uh, by you guys, includes some of the uh, Recovery Act dollars. And um, so it's good to see that, that you're able to get that money uh, into, into some capital improvements that's going to remain in place uh, forever. So it's not just an ephemeral spending of the money, but at the same time, it's a non-recurring expense because the way the Blue Sky underwrites it it's a set it and forget it. You, you, it doesn't, the, the property's not gonna require any assistance uh, after we're completed. Okay, thank you very much. And if anyone hasn't had a chance to tour Blue Sky uh, and some of the work they've done, it's, it's really amazing. And so I just wanna thank you again for your continued uh, commitment um, to the city. It's a really hard time to find land to build right now. Um, so we, we really appreciate your commitment Thank to you. keeping affordable housing affordable. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. My name is uh, Keila McCaskill. I want to start, I didn't prepare for this, but I want to start off by saying I support uh, what uh, Council Member Carlson said regarding the economic um, development before you send the money external. I believe we have enough staff with Nicole Travis and Councilman Carlson and you all leading that, before you send it external, I'd like for you to explore, maximize the opportunities internal before we send the money out, particularly when they start saying East Tampa and we hadn't seen them historically previously. So this morning I came in to share some concerns. I'm a native here in Tampa and for the most part, I've been proud of my city. Here recently, we've, you know, we've had a lot to happen. Um, we've had some great things happen in the past couple years. We've also had some devastation. More recently, this peer discovery that just recently came out was one of the ones, and that's kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back. So much has happened. The administration has done some things that are downright unacceptable, and you all fought some and you allowed some. And so the lack of trust in this community is just running rampant, particularly in the administration, especially when the, the majority, of, you know, with the ethics committee, the, um, the administration, the mayor's office has more of good control regarding the ethics, and we want to see that change. The administration, like I said, they played a big, big role in a lot of the distrust. While all of this is happening, nothing really is progressing as it should be um, in the city of Tampa. There's some great people that live here. While, while there's a tug of war on power plays and, and, and who's in control and who's doing what, we also know that there's been some favors. That the amend I believe there's been some favors, especially with peer. I'm not sure who's getting paid behind the whole peer thing. I'm not sure who is getting paid off the Hannah project, but all of those things happen, and I can't change that. I can't revamp that, but we've got a lot. While all that's going on, we still have major problems like housing. We know that's a big deal. So nothing's really happened as it should. It's not progressing as it could because of all the other minutia that you all have to navigate through. So today I'm calling, I'm asking for a reset. I believe that even though I don't like some of the things that the mayor and the administration has done, I believe that you all, as well as the administration and the community, we all want the same thing for the greater good of Tampa, Tampa Bay, whatever we want to call it. So I'm asking for a reset. I want somebody to demonstrate leadership. A lot of you are running for office. I don't care about your signs, your, your fundraisers, your events, when you get to speak, the photo ops, and none of that. I want to see the leadership from this dais. This is, this is your biggest platform. Show us now how you can be a leader. I want to see the mayor come to you all individually, maybe with Bennett, Travis, somebody, one-on-one. -on -one. You set some parameters on what must take place for us to move collectively so that we can progress this city. I'm sick of it. We're tired. We can't keep coming down here sharing the concerns. You're the leaders. We voted you in. We want to see the leadership. I don't want to hear another speech. I don't want to see another sign from either side. I would like to see you all come together. After you've had that one-on-one, -on -one, then publicly come share how we're going to move this city forward with trust, transparency, accountability, whatever you want to call it. I want to see the, the, the leadership demonstrated. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Council. Good morning. Uh, Robin Lockett. So I wanted to... Uh, initially come up and just 
you know, identify that this is your last council meeting, I guess, for this year. Wishing you guys a, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And hopefully we can transition into the new year to greater things, right? Making a decision about greater things. But while I was sitting in the, but, don't negate everything I just said. <laughs> but while I was sitting in the, off, uh, the audience, just listening to everyone identify all of the problems that goes on in the, in the, in the community, it just, just identifying them, right? You're able to tell the story of the disparities, disparity, the blight and everything, right? Next year, please come back with the attitude of, res of, of resolution. Not what you can't do, but what can you do? What's the compromise? Because you got, you all, everybody knows it. And we shouldn't even have to come down here to tell you about it, because you know it. You see it. You hear it. You hear about it. So what is the resolve? That's what I want to see. What is the resolve? No more excuses. You're putting the people first. People over profit. Thank you. Enjoy your holiday. Thank you. Happy holidays to you as well. Good morning, my name is Stephanie Pointer, um, and I'd like to echo a little bit of what Robin said. People need to come first, but over and over again, I see that there's corruption. Sorry, not sorry. When I see seven people on a council and four of them vote the same exact way 16 times <clears throat> in a row, I have a problem because God gave every single one of you a very good brain to use and you, didn't, you cannot tell me that you got up that morning and decided, oh, I'm going to vote the same way as all these other people all at the same time. So I just want to point that out first. Second of all, I think this is probably a monumental moment. Young Republicans, Sierra Club, FAN, and many, many other citizens in the city of Tampa agree that Pure was crap. But... I want to know when this council will investigate the fact that our tax dollars were spent sending someone to Tallahassee to lobby for the bill that is going to cost us $2 billion. I want everybody in here to do a little math with me. $2 billion divided by the 400,000 citizens in the city of Tampa is $5,000 a citizen. Not for household, but per citizen. So everybody in here, go ahead and get your checkbooks out. That's four thousand, four billion, six billion, eight billion. You just keep multiplying it. Twenty thousand dollars a piece. If it costs us eight billion dollars, I'm sorry, but we need roads fixed. We need housing. And to let that go unturned, I think there's more in. I, I think there's more into it. We spent $300,000 investigating what Mr. Goode said by his swimming pool. We spent $25,000 investigating Councilman Dingfelder when he was already gone for making phone calls for people that he's friends with. Oh my gosh, I call people all the time and I say, hey, can you tell me who I need to talk to for stuff? And don't tell me that nobody on that council has not made a call for your constituent because we are the citizens. You're supposed to help us. Sorry, not sorry. But we spent $325,000 investigating, and nobody can tell me who investigated it because it didn't go in front of the Ethics Commission. If it didn't go in front of the Ethics Commission, who ordered it done? Somebody has to order it, but yet you guys are making a choice to ignore where an investigation is needed into the miss, the corruption behind them sending somebody on my tax dollar, your tax dollar, your tax dollar, and your tax dollar to Tallahassee to tell them, yes, we need to spend billions of dollars that we don't have in the first place. Thank you. Is there anyone else in chambers that wishes to speak for public comment? I believe we have three people online. Mr. Randolph, are you there? Yes, uh, good morning. 
Good morning. Um, today I want to talk about the West Tampa Public Safety Initiative. This initiative is a place-based community initiative that, that focuses on a comprehensive and holistic approach to reducing crime. It is a threefold approach that focuses on prevention, intervention, and deterrence using a national approach. What do we know? We know we cannot police our way out of it. For example, in Tampa, there's 1,000 police officers for 400,000 residents. Our approach looks at reducing recidivism, increasing opportunity for at-risk youth, especially the hardcore, removing barriers to economic opportunity, and ending the school, the prison uh, pipeline. The partnership that we're forming includes social services, Department of Correction, the Juvenile Detention Center, Parole, Probation, Institution of Higher Learning, other nonprofit, judges, neighborhood groups, and residents. We're moving from a community erupters to community building by connecting people to the community. As you know, there is a CAC Public Safety Committee that does <laughs> in West Tampa, we'll be working hand in hand with them in order to reduce the violence and crime in West Tampa. Happy New Year's to everybody. We need to go into the New Year's with a different perspective. We need to stop the killing and we need to use realistic, evidence-based initiatives. The police cannot solve everything. Our solution is when a crime is committed or murder is committed, we bring on the police department. It's not enough for them to solve the problem. This has to be a community-based initiative to solve the problem in the community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Randolph. <coughs> Ms. Trollmeyer. Well, good morning, y'all. Hope all is well. My name is Jean Strohmeyer. Just going to look over the agenda here real quick because I, anyway, so um, let's see. Agenda items number five. Um, this is, I didn't do it as organized as I normally would because I've been busy. CRA, oh, that's right. The CRA, why are we still doing a CRA in Channel District? They, we need the money elsewhere in the city. Um, number six, item number six is upgrading, replacing sire. That's probably a good idea. I think it should be connected to the Estella. Somehow those two need to be connected, um, you know, because we're hunting in those and it's not, it's just not easy. And it's just kind of confusing for me who's been doing it for years, but you know, for average citizen, it's not gonna be real good. Item number six I have here, that was that. Number eight, I have, let's see. Um, support a program for victims of crime and accompanying mental health program to be placed on the budget. I guess I'm, I'll, I'll be following that. But crime is often associated with the drugs going on here. And if you look, there's a marijuana medical um, clinic on every street corner. They need to be stopped. It's just like the pain clinics of yesteryear. Um, these people are catatonically addicted to that stuff. It's not your pot from the 80s. This is some really bad psychosomatic stuff that's really messing with people's brains. It needs to stop. Item number 12, um, let's see why original, uh, this is 30 year plan on policies of, in the incinerator. I'm not sure about that, but I don't see why that is. Um, we have number 15, item is 15. Supply and demand. Oh, that's what I wrote in my notes. Supply and demand. So, you know, you know, that's just it. Um, 21, um, naming a building. Why is the mayor naming a building? I think that should be left to the people. We should name our own buildings. This is our city. The mayor's there for a moment, not for perpetual perpetuation. Um, items 28 through, um, it looks like 40. I just did a quick add on that. That's like $5 billion. So if y'all are spending that kind of money, I really hope, I know some of y'all really do look into the, the figures, but you know, we really need to figure out what, what money's going to. And you know, everybody talks about social justice. The Bible never says social justice or economic justice. It doesn't exist. It's just justice. Justice is blind to your, your economic status or your um, political status or anything else. So just think about what justice really means. That means equal no matter what. Justice, Lady Justice is blind. I've been in the legal department, the legal 
um, my entire life. So let's just get back to the basics. Y'all have a great day. Have a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. See you next time. Thank you very much. Michael Bishop, are you on the line? I am. Please proceed. Good morning. Um, my name is Michael Bishop, uh, 941 East Chatillon Avenue. Um, I'm here to speak to items six and seven. Uh, first, I want to clarify the timeline for Sire. Microsoft put the version of Windows Server Sire requires on life support in 2015 with an end of life for January 2020. Uh, Highland announced a December 2021 end of life for Sire in the spring of 2020. Uh, for us to still be running Sire in December of 2022 is the antithesis of resiliency. The city's entire economic engine is managed by this system. Two billion dollar uh, budget and every development project required in zoning or variance review relies on it. It's critical digital infrastructure. So now we're between a rock and a hard place. I agree agenda management is software is a niche market. Google search returns about a half dozen results where board and agenda management is the core product. It should be noted, however, that OnBase doesn't mention agenda or board management on their website. They are designed, quote, designed to be a management of your content, processes, and cases. I can see how it can be adapted to run agendas and meetings, but it seems tailored to be an organization-wide cloud document management platform. So which is the best is a question of what do you want to do? It appears the answer to that question was to narrowly replicate the exact system we currently have. Why? Who made that decision for us? I just want to jump into um, the last comment about um, Acela. By keeping the bounds of this at such a small scope, um, we're limiting our, our opportunities. Even if we were to go to the on base, they have S3 for GIS and Acela integrations. Why didn't we ask uh, to include those types of things into the scope of this project? Currently, it does not include that. It explicitly um, says there are no third party integrations. I would ask that. Council look at expanding the scope of this and imagining what we can do now and not what was capable 15 years ago when we adopted uh, Sire. My last question is like everything that is bound by Sire in quasi judicial hearings, has there been conversations as to how we're going to proceed out of that over this process? Um, I guess that's all I really wanted to cover uh, in my time. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone else online? Is there anyone else in chambers who wishes to give public comment? Seeing none, we are going to forego the administrative update and let's go to agenda item number 45, file number F22-78771. Morning, Council Sauer Gerio, Deputy Administrator, Infrastructure Services. Larry Washington was on his way over here. He must have got stuck in traffic. But what we're asking here is, is for you to grant him a one-year residency uh, exemption as director of uh, Solid Waste. He's doing a wonderful job. I uh, want to give him a little bit more time to, to you know, find a place to live in the city. And this is something that he's entitled to. So we really want to keep him. Councilman Maniscalco. Is this his first request for an extension? It's it's his first request. Uh, he was given one when he was appointed, and this is the first one since he was director. Okay, so this is the first that you're you're yeah. asking for us now. Yes, okay, thank you. I would move the resolution. We have a motion made by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank motion you. Passes. Agenda item number forty-six, file number F twenty-two seven eight nine one. Nine. Good morning, Good Chairman, morning. members of City Council, Megan Newcomb, Assistant City Attorney. Um, I've been asked by uh, Chief Bennett as part of my role as the legal advisor for the Tampa Police Department to present this resolution to Council for your consideration, uh, the appointment as Interim uh, Chief of Police of Lee Burkaw, of Lee Burkaw as the Interim Chief, the head of the Tampa Police Department, as well as a request for a one-year residency waiver, and I'd ask in your consideration that you all hear some comments from uh, Lee Burkhoff. Thank you. And if I could speak after you, please. No, we have administrative updates was not placed in, so they had pulled agenda items number 45 and 46 for discussion during administrative updates. And I believe Maniscalco, Councilman Maniscalco made that motion to accept me. Surely. 
Would you like to say something? <coughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Council members, good morning, and thank you for providing an opportunity for me to formally introduce myself and express my commitment to the position of Chief of Police. I'm sure you all know me, but I'm Lee Burkaw, and I've been here for 26 years working all three patrol districts and numerous other supervisory roles. I understand the needs of the city, its residents, and our dedicated officers who work every day to reduce crime and improve the quality of life. My role as interim chief is I promise to uphold the highest standard of law enforcement. I will maintain the expectation for every officer to serve and protect all communities, treating each citizen with dignity, respect, and professionalism in every encounter. In the rare instance where an officer falls short of that standard of excellence, I believe in proactively addressing the matter swiftly and fairly. A successful law enforcement agency is one that makes community relationships a top priority as we continue to do that at TPD. We have a greater focus now on community engagement in the overall wellness of our citizens and our officers and professional staff. I'm actively working to fill vacant positions, including a victim advocate, behavioral health clinicians, and officers who will work both alongside them and out on our streets, making Tampa safer together. I have already begun building stronger partnerships with our community action groups, faith-based organizations, federal and state agencies. In my first week in this role, I dedicated time to meet with community leaders directly addressed our neighborhood watch groups, civic leaders, and spoke with law enforcement chiefs and sheriffs across Tampa Bay to express my desire to serve in partnership. I also made contact with most of you as our council members to reaffirm my desire to have a strong, positive working relationship. I have here with me today, also in support of this confirmation, is my command staff, the PBA executive team, and the ATU president. At TPD, we're moving in the right direction. Despite a 26% growth in population in the last 21 years, Tampa's violent crime rate is down 72% over that same time frame. Our crime rate is nearly half of other cities our size. We've seen a 20% increase in guns recovered over the last year. That's 250 additional firearms taken off the street. And due to the strong leadership and genuine care for our community, officers are now more productive this year than last year with a 40% increase in proactive efforts. I look forward to serving in this role and I encourage and invite you all to come and join us in many of our community engagements events in the upcoming months. And you'll be able to see firsthand the great work of our police department that we're spearheading. It's truly my honor to lead this great agency as the interim chief and thank you for your support. Councilman Maniscalco. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And these are just my opinions. No endorsement, no criticism, nothing. But uh, first, congratulations on this nomination uh, as you come before us for, uh, to be confirmed as interim chief of police. Uh, I have known you since I was first elected in 2015. Uh, you and I have always had a good relationship. You've always been very, very responsive. Uh, I can't say I've ever had an issue, because I have not. You've always been the utmost professional. We have many wonderful individuals within this city of Tampa, within the police department, many of which are standing or sitting behind you right now, the women and men there, highly qualified individuals that go above and beyond. The gentleman that was here as Officer of the Month is an exemplary example of what a great officer is in service to this community. <coughs> I personally, and this is my opinion, I think national searches are um, an insult to the police department. Why? Because uh, I've been here since 15 and I've seen multiple chiefs come through. I came in when uh, Chief Castor was here, then it was uh, Ward, then it was Dugan. At the end of the day, the best and the brightest are within the city of Tampa Police Department. And we've seen that all across the board. Um, I'm happy to support you today. Uh, again, your reputation speaks for itself. Uh, you're a good person. You're always in the community. I've seen you in a variety of capacities. And again, not a single criticism from anybody, always complimentary of what you do. And uh, thank you for, for 
everything that you do and your team that's behind you. So I'm, I'm going to be supportive of you today, sir. Thank you. Councilman Vieira. Thank you, sir. And, and I'll, I'll be glad to support you. We, we spoke briefly, and, and I've had nothing but great interactions with you. You seem like a, like a fine gentleman, like a representative of what makes our Tampa Police Department so outstanding. Police officers come from different perspectives uh, in terms of how they do the job, how they interact with the community, but they all have uh, something that you clearly have, which is a real dedication to the public. I think that the biggest thing, and we spoke about this, that Tampa Police Department needs after the acute nature of the, the prior nomination, um, the, the uproar that, that happened over that, and then the things that happened two weeks ago, is stability. Our officers need stability, and you are stability. I, I, I see you as that. You, you have something that I really value in life, which is temperament and disposition. That's really important, the need to stay calm. Uh, because we see escalation in the city of Tampa on things that also affect the police department, which is politics. We see escalation, um, and we need somebody in there who's going to be very, very calm. I see you as that kind of person. You're not just a calm person with good uh, uh, disposition and temperament, but you're also, uh, for, from everything I've seen, are a man of character. And that's something that's very, very important. So I, I look forward to working with you, sir. If we approve you, I'll, I'll certainly be in support on a number of issues. I know we'll be speaking about victims of crime and some programs that have been put forward in that regard. The public safety master plan, seeing something in writing on that, I think is very important for the citizens of Tampa, et cetera. Um, but again, stability for our officers. They, they need to have stability in this. And I think that you're the kind of person who provides that. So, and I think that the PBA and ATU um, and, and all the fine men and women behind you uh, for their support of you, because I think it's uh, something that's well taken. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Carlson. I will echo what my colleague just said about civility and also thank you for your um, outreach to the community. What I think the men and women of um, police force need also is the support of the community because uh, they put their lives <coughs> on the line day and I've mentioned in my district the biggest issue by far right now is is crime and uh, the folks in my district neighborhood leaders and homeowners and others desperately want your help and the help of the uh, community and I can say a hundred percent in the last three and a half years that I've been here you've helped with every constituent issue that I've had a need on and um, you and I since you got uh, appointed the other day um, have traded messages and phone calls and I appreciate your uh, ongoing communication to help listen to what the community needs. And the fact you have two PBA people standing beside you, I, I assume means they support you as well. So uh, thank you, look forward to working with you. Councilman Miranda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chief Burkhoff, appreciate uh, your 26 years of service and what you've learned and what you uh, now gonna, your learning experience of 26 years will certainly be the demeanor which you're gonna judge and work to be your chief. And uh, like uh, Council Member Menescalco said, I'm one that believes in this. If you're in the Tampa Police Department and you've gone through all the courses, and I'm not talking about you, sir, one individual, all of them, male, female, no matter who they are, and all of a sudden you see that the top spot can never be yours because somebody wants Galactica search, and I'm not saying who, but I, every time I hear, no matter where you're at, somebody wants to stay, somebody's better somewhere else. Well, why in the hell did that guy didn't show up or that lady show up way back? That person, you know what it was then? Because during those times, in my mind anyway, we didn't have the highest educated individual, but we had the most important. You don't have to be a brain if you want to be a good cop to be chief. You got to know how to talk to who? The people on the street and understand what's going on. The other part of it certainly helps your resume and become vigilant of the fact that the world is changing and crime is changing. And now crime has done, you know what? mostly through a computer. And you have to tell the people all over the city to do one basic thing and crime will be reduced. You know what that is? Don't leave your keys in the car when your car is unlocked. Don't leave your garage door open when nobody's home. Don't leave your garage door open, period. But we create the opportunities. We, the citizens, create, not only in this city, and don't take my word for it, you know better than I do, the majority of the crime we create ourselves by being careless. And we can't hire more intelligent cops if we don't have people living in the city that's willing to port down the garage door <coughs> and don't leave your keys and don't leave gifts, especially now during the Christmas, in your car where everybody can see. People 
sometimes make stupid mistakes. And that's, and I'm not calling the citizen stupid, I'm calling the mistake a stupid thing. When somebody sees that, they break in the car and there goes the criminal. And so it's just a hard thing to do. You're gonna have over a thousand people under you and brother, that ain't easy, as you well know. You got a thousand different personalities, a thousand, a thousand different ideas, and you're the one that's gonna to have to make the choice which is the idea you think is best along with the citizens. The community corporation with all the citizens will make your job much, much easier because instead of having 1,000 cops, you're gonna have 50,000 people on your side. And they can do more good and solve more crime faster than any police department because they saw it, we didn't. So those are the things that I'm sure you know how to do and you will continue to do. And you've always been a supportive of your information, of the way you act yourself and the way you present yourself. And I will certainly be supporting you and I'm happy to do that. I appreciate very much for you saying that you wanted the job. Thank you. Councilman Goods. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, Lee, I guess it's, it's your turn now. I, I don't have a problem with the nomination today, but I do have to you know, let some of the councilmen know uh, I've been a police officer. I've worked at 1710. I've worked across the street. I know police business. Most of you don't. You believe with your hearts and what you may have heard, but you haven't worked here to understand how it works. We've had many chiefs. I've worked for like five chiefs. I think a total since I've been in the city, maybe a total of eight. Every chief has their own philosophy. I hope you know what Lee's is. I tell you, every police chief has their own philosophy. But I can tell you the best chief ever served the city of Tampa it's not criticizing any chief, but the best chief I've ever served for was Eduardo Gonzalez. It was the best chief the Tampa police ever had. You know why? Because he came in with a different mindset. He came in and made changes of diversity in a police department where, where so, certain folks couldn't be on a motorcycle squad, where certain folks, folks couldn't be on a canine unit. He came in and made changes for the whole to make everybody happy. He made promotions equally. He looked at the promotions. He looked at some of the training programs, but then of course Clinton became president and he came and got Eduardo very quickly to be the United States Marshal. Sometimes you can have the chief, but sometimes the chief still answers to the mayor. And I can remember Eduardo Gonzalez telling Robert Smith, you know who that is, right? When Sandy Friend brought him here, he told Robert Smith, you're not my boss. I'm the chief of police. I can remember that. I can remember Robert Gonzalez coming down to the roll call room, bringing Cuban coffee. I thought my heart was coming out of my chest, but I don't drink coffee. Talking to the troops. I can remember him being fair with discipline to where he looked at what was, what was done of, of a supervisor, somebody was just being a jerk or didn't like somebody. I can remember those days where he, you know, he, he looked at who was doing the job and not because you may have had a past in discretion, but still said that guy was there was an opportunity promoted. I'm hoping you'll be that guy, Lee, to change the mindset of the people. He brought a community policing concept that was no other, where officers had to go out there and work with our young people. Most 90% of our police officers don't even live in the city of Tampa. They live in Wesley Chapel. They live all over the place. So it's a difference when you live somewhere and you're embedded versus you live other places. I don't have a problem with people live at. I just want to make sure that officers are, work with people, you know. I get my hair cut, you know, I, at the local places, you know. It's a difference when people can see that officer versus the only time they encounter they see him is when something bad happens. I mean, Gonzalez had a, a system to where he, he wanted to make sure the officers were engaging the people, coaching. You know, that's where I got started. A lot of our officers got started just coaching kids, man. Knew who they were, couldn't understand them. You know, some of the old things do work with policing. I don't believe in gun buybacks. I was a police officer before, they don't work. You may get a dime in the rough every now and then to solve a crime. But for the most part, you know, when guys are out there on the street and they got a good guy who can, what I call an informant, a snitch, whatever you call, they can, they can be able to get a couple of dollars in their pocket. I hate to say that. We solved crimes. We did it when crack was real big. We, we, you know, we, we got people off the street. We changed the game. I was looking for a game changer. 
That's what people are looking for. I'm just hoping that you're going to be that guy, Lee, to say, hey, I'm going to step up and do some th things that are different than what everybody else did. We've had black chiefs, but sometimes they were controlled by, by mayors. I'm just hoping that, you know, we can have a good crime effort to really deal with the citizens want and make sure our officers are really listening to the citizens. And they do for the most part, but I think the community or in police that I'm looking for of the old days, I think that's what has to come back. I, I truly believe that. When, when officers are coaching our kids, when they're doing programs and they're spending their money, you know, in our community, I mean, that's what they trust. That's what they really trust. I'm just hoping that you, you'll bring some of those efforts back to make them stronger. You know, I hear officers all the time. I look at the numbers. I get it all the time, you know. IFTO program. I look at those numbers as well. Everybody's not a good teacher. And we should look at who's failing every, how many people, are, that training officer is failing so many people. Why, why is that so? Everyone's not a good teacher. That's just there to be for the pay, the extra incentives. You know, we're losing officers in that program, especially minority officers in that program. We lose a lot of them in that program. And I think because of the teaching, I think because of the style. So I'm just hoping you look at all those things when you make your promotion with your staff. And that's what I'm looking for because that's what the officers tell me. So I have to tell you this today because that's what they tell me. I've been there. I know how it is. I've been there. So I know how it works. I'm just asking that you be a, cha a game changer. And I'll support you today. Thank you, Councilwoman Herjack. Um, this is my first appointment or approval of um, a police chief, and I wasn't here for the last vote. Um, I was one of those community members that really supported Butch, um, and it took a really long time for the community to get over that, and I would say that some of them still haven't. So I appreciate that the first thing you did was go to the community um, because they know you, because you have been there. Um, so I really want to say uh, I really do appreciate that. Um, I appreciate that from the moment I came in, you have been wonderfully helpful and always uh, accommodating, always um, made a point to, to search me out um, when I was somewhere and say hello and, and talk about things. So I think that's wonderful. I know we have plans to meet um, and that we've spoken. Um, I'm going to echo the other council members' desire for stability. Uh, I think you bring that automatically, having been in the role you've been in for, for a while, uh, and that you have worked with citizens in all different districts, uh, and people know you. <clears throat> I think that's very important. Um, uh, I'm, there were strides that were, have been made in community engagement and rebuilding of trust. As Councilman Good said, um, one of the great things that was started again was PAL and bringing officers back to work in the community. Um, and I, I absolutely, uh, that's what I'll be looking to see um, as time goes on. Is that still happening? How else are we engaging to develop that trust that you talked about? And uh, it can be difficult when people don't live in the area. So how else can we help develop that that um, banter, that everyday communication, um, that does build trust. I mean, that's basically the only way you do that. And you're out in the community, you know that, but how else can we encourage our officers to do that? Uh, the other thing that I really liked that, that um, Chief O'Connor did was really focusing on officer wellness and safety. That's absolutely critical, especially after what everyone has been through with COVID. We're seeing it all over the nation with everyone. Cannot imagine the amount of stress and strain that our officers have gone through during that time and after, and making sure that their mental and um, physical health is a priority for all of us, to take away that stigma of asking for help. And <clears throat> so uh, that's, that's the other thing that's incredibly big for me. So I know the community has a lot of thoughts for you. I know you're kind of, I know you have already hit the ground running, um, but the good news is, is you've been there You've, you've been to those meetings, you know people, so starting, um, it's not really starting over. You're just building upon what has already been built, and, um, and that gives uh, me, and I I'm, can't speak for others, but it gives, gives me a level of comfort knowing that 
that that's that we're not starting over again in that regard. So um, you will have my support today, and uh, I really look forward to ongoing communication. Thank you. Anyone else? Lee, I know you to be a good person. I know you to be a damn good cop. I've known you for years, and I am happy to support you on this, and I'm happy to confirm you on this. There's something that I ask that you do. I ask that you advocate for more police officers. Our city is growing rapidly. The amount of people that are coming to this city, in my opinion, we need more police officers. We only have a, a definite amount of police officers. And when we have blackout dates, such as Gasparilla or any sporting event, that means that an officer can't take sick time, can't take family time, can't take training time. We may have 27 new candidates coming from the academy, but through attrition, if we have 29 officers leaving, you're losing two. Lee, I hope that you will advocate for more hiring of more police officers so that we can keep on keeping our citizens safe. Congratulations to you, Lee. Move Thank you. Second. We have a motion made by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Agenda item number five, file number F227849. Councilman Carls. Um, my firm has a client related to this, and I don't, we're not sure if I have a, a conflict. I don't think I do, but just in abundance of caution, I'd like to recuse myself and file, um, file number 8B, um, just out of abundance of caution. Could I get a, so I'd like to move acceptance of my form 8 so Receive. We have a motion made by <laughs> Councilman Good, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Move number five, Mr. Chairman. Second. We have a motion made to move the resolution by Councilman Man uh, Miranda, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor? Let's take a roll call vote, please, because of the number. <laughs> Miranda? Yes. Hertek? Yes. Carlson? Goods? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. And Citro? Yes. Motion carry unanimously with Carlson abstaining. Thank you very much. Next are agenda items number six and seven, file number F2278760 and file number F2278917. Good morning. Good morning. Who are we going to go to first? Meeting. Okay. Thank you. Um, Marcy Hamilton, Assistant City Attorney. Um, I'm here on item number six. Um, actually, this is a technology um, software product, Highland. We're currently using a Highland uh, product. Um, the SAR system that we have now was actually um, uh, sold to Highland. Um, it needs an upgrade, as you heard this morning, under public comment. The sire item is a dead product. There's no updates, no upgrades to it. So they now wish to move to the on-base system through Highland, which um, is somewhat easier to convert over from sire to the Highland product, um, the on-base system, since it's currently in use and Highland personnel know how our system is currently functioning. The current um, award would be just for the agenda items and also for um, committee management. Um, and that's the current um, award, which would be for a five-year period, and then continue support for annual um, renewals after that. <coughs> Any questions? Con Councilman Carlson. Um, I, I read the backup on this, and as you said, um, Sire was 
purchased by Highland a few years ago, and then Mr. Bishop also mentioned um, the Windows platform that the old software ran on and everything. Mm -hmm. it, it seems to me that we kind of have no choice but to migrate um, because I, I may be reading between the lines, but it seems like we have no choice but to migrate because um, the Highland software, I, I assume, would be easier to migrate into um, because because Highland acquired um, Sire. But in, in the future, does does somebody from IT think this is the best yeah. software package, or will we be uh, once this migration is done, will we start looking more broadly at what the best system is to use for the future? Mm -hmm. Um, my understanding is, and I know that the clerk's office has had demonstrations regarding the Highland product. Um, also, TNI also investigated what had been used and what is currently being used um, in various agencies. And um, a lot of people do like the um, on base system. Yes, that's uh, Mr. Halpert. Hi, this is Russell Halpert. I'm the CIO CTO for the city of Tampa. And, and uh, good morning, Council. Um, uh, as uh, Marcy pointed out, uh, we, we are looking to move to this new system. I, I would like to uh, address a couple of the comments. This is a fully supported new system from Highland, and it does have an entry on their website that says it's an agenda management uh, software in good support, number one. Um, number two, um, uh, I wouldn't characterize this as a we have no choice. We did a lot of vetting to find out whether this would be a good choice. Uh, as Marcy indicated, there are a lot of good reasons to stay with this software. However, we wanted to make sure that that was really the case. Uh, so we went through that process last year, and we feel this is an excellent choice. And, and again, in reference to some of the comments in public comment, uh, some of our issues due to the age of the software uh, aren't interface related. They're supported content and under the new system we'll be able to support links and content of all different types and we feel that this is the best system that we could choose right now i don't think we need to look for another system i think what we we need to do at this point is is approve this new system and get you guys through the training so that you can fully utilize a modern system that this represents and, and if you have any other questions i'm i'm open to your uh, uh, to your comments just two quick follow-ups. Councilman Carlson. Two quick follow-ups. Um, the um, uh, uh, someone in public comment mentioned connectivity to Sela. Is that possible? Mm -hmm. And then number two, um, can we assume that it that it will go back and and uh, and manage the the legacy agenda items in the same way? If somebody wanted to go back and search the agendas in the past, will it still uh, will, will it just be on the new interface? But all the documents will still be there. Yes, we'll we'll be porting over our history. And we'll be bringing that forward as fully as possible. Uh, I can't say that every document will come over, but we'll work with you guys to understand uh, what does come over and what can come over. But I think we're at like a 99.9% .9 compliance when we went through our initial test. So I think we're going to be good with that. Uh, and then secondarily, um, the question was concerning... Acela, um, connectivity to Acela. Acela. Uh, again, it, depending on what you mean by that, uh, a link to an Excel project is certainly possible. Oh, cool. uh, in what manner we would integrate the two question, the two systems, uh, that would be a, a question I would have to ask the intent on that. But, but quite frankly, if we want to link to a specific item in Excel, I believe we could do that if we wanted to. Okay, thank you. Councilman Hurtak. Um, those were some of my questions, so thank you for Councilman Carlson for asking them. Um, I have to say with a brand new, um, brand new software, brand new project, I'm not, I don't think I'm comfortable with five years before we would really review it. Um, mm -hmm. this is a five year, that's what you're asking us for, correct? Five uh, years? Uh, ma'am, those, those items are contingent upon funding. So we do that each year in success, successive years. If we felt the system somehow didn't meet our needs, we don't have to carry through the full five-year agreement. It would be up to us to switch to something else. We merely lay out the terms of the contract for the pricing and to make sure that we have that set and that it will always be contingent upon budget and your authority. Um, my other question goes to the community. Um, what types of community engagement have you all planned to get residents up to speed on this new software? 
uh, we've done similar items with our new utility billing system. And so we're going to be working with our change management department. We'll be putting together a set of videos and other educational ses sessions so that anyone who needs to learn how to use the system or is uncomfortable with it will have some recourse to, to learn that new system. I think we're going to be doing some outreach with some of our major customers. Uh, you know, we know we have some repeat folks who are uh, uh, in the system more than others. Let's just put it that way. And we're going to open up that for training for them as well. Okay, thank you. Move the resolution. Oh. Got some goods. L little confused here. Um, we're going to buy a system, have a five-year deal on the system, and hope that it works. Uh, I, I'm, I'm confused here. I'm thinking if I buy a product, I need to know now that product is what I need to get the job done. So I'm, I'm kind of confused. I mean, I, I mean, explain that to me a little bit, Russell. Yeah, and Councilman, we know that it works. I was merely saying that if somewhere down the line, council or other people or other people here in the city identified a better product project product we are not tracked by this so i was outlining the, the notes of the deal but we are fully qualified the software we've tested uh we've looked with cities like san jose who are three times our size and using this product successfully and we think that this is a product that's going to be able to grow with us I was merely indicating that if something better came along, we were not locked out. We have successive renewal deals, and that's really just to make sure that we understand what our costs are going to be in the future so that we have a little bit more predictability from the financial side. Okay, I'm, I'm glad for that understanding now that I got confused of buying a product and waiting yeah. five years. Okay, I, all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Councilman Herjack. Um, right now, Sire is, has been incredibly slow for the last two weeks. Doesn't matter what I use, what what computer, my personal computer, my work computer, doesn't matter if I use um, high speed internet, does not matter. I, I have trouble loading anything with a PDF. Uh, so I understand, um, can you explain that, that we need to replace it, but can you please explain the timeline that's go uh, of how quickly this is going to be done yeah. and when that will start and when we expect to see those changes? Okay. Well, for us, uh, first off, if you're having some issues, of course, I can have my staff work with you on that. And, I have been and doing that. that. Thank you. Those, those aren't uh, the issues that you're mentioning aren't across the board. So I would want to make sure that we could deal with you in the meantime. But uh, moving forward, um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. Could you repeat the question one more time? Sure. Um, I just wanted to know a timeline for when this is uh, going yeah. to get started, sorry. because that's that's the real reason I wanted to talk about this today is because the community has also spoken out to me saying that they're having trouble um, seeing plans and documents and just having the agendas pull up um, alone. So what, how, how quickly will this get done? What, what will that look like for those of us who use the software? Upon, upon approval um, and resources available yes. from Highland, and, and we think that they are at this point, but upon approval, we're looking for a January kickoff the project usually take, would be a four to six month. I've outlined this in the memo that I sent to you guys. And, and, and we believe that we should have it in before the end of the first quarter, assuming we have all the resources necessary from Highland in order to do that. Um, will they be running in succession? So will we still be able to um, get documents on SIRE while you're putting this new system in place so that we make sure that we don't have any breaks in coverage? Absolutely. Before we go live, ma'am, we're going to make sure that the new system can process a full agenda and it will look just the way it needs to look in the old system and the new system. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, that's what I've heard from the community. I appreciate you, uh, you um, giving us the timeline. Certainly. Before we go to the motion, uh, we are going to have safeguards in place for uh, cyber criminals and any type of hacking that may be going on? Uh, yes, sir. Our, our Chief Information and Security Officer, Martin Zanayich, has reviewed the product, and as we install it, we'll be making sure that they're meeting those objectives. We also will get a yearly, what's called a yearly SOC report from Highland that details their security initiatives and what issues they have or haven't had so that we can approve that as part of our audit each year. One of my greatest concerns is that this city is not held for ransom simply because somebody has put uh, 
a virus into our system. All right, we have a motion made by Councilman Second. Scotco, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? Thank you. Thank you very much. Agenda item number seven, file number F2278917. We're done on that? Both of them were done. Excellent. No, no. Item number seven. Thank you very much. Second. A motion made by Councilman Mascocco, seconded by Councilman Randall. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. File. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Councilman Murdoch. No, it's just not Roll call vote on that? Yes. I was I was thinking that myself. Hey. I wish you would have brought that up. Sorry. Well good great minds think alike. <laughs> well let's let's since since Councilman Maniscalco is gone, let, can we uh, will we accept the roll call vote? Sure. Okay. Uh, s agenda item number eight. Yeah. Accept the vote as is. Okay, thank you. Are we good there, uh, Mr. Shelby? Yes. Sir. Thank you. Agenda item number eight, file number CM21-71670. Uh, good morning again, Council. Megan Newcomb, Assistant City Attorney here on behalf of the Police Department. Thank you, Councilman uh, Vieira, for excusing Deputy Chief Johnson. Uh, but we did file a memorandum to Council uh, regarding the efforts of the Police Department in respect to victims' assistance. We are excited to report that we do have a victim's advocate position that's been funded by the police department. She will be starting in January of 2023. Uh, the police department cannot directly provide monetary assistance to crime victims. That would be an ethical violation and could potentially affect criminal cases. We have identified the city of Tampa funds uh, from the Social Action Arts Fund that could be utilized for acute needs of some violent crime victims and that's one of the items that our victims assistant will be um, exploring in the future there also is a current uh, program through the franciscan center that would assist uh, crime victims with um, mental health counseling it's, it's essentially a retreat um, and so another item that we would be exploring through a victim's advocate would be to find funding um, to send some crime victims uh, to that retreat so those are the the action items that the police department has taken on this topic. Councilman Goods. This is very, very good. I'll tell you why. Uh, within the last four or five months, some of our victims uh, have been trying to reach out for help, counseling. And we've contacted the victim assistance program for the state and other places, and they kind of got the run around a little bit. So I'm, I'm hoping that this will help them that we have an outlet for them to go to and then we can direct them to resources and services. Uh, this is very, very good uh, because my office, we went round and around with a, a, a couple of issues and I'm, I'm hoping that we've got it resolved that those folks are with their contacts and get some help. But I think it's very, very good that we, we're right there in touch with the victim as it, as, it, uh, as it turns and we can identify those who are having some crisis situations and uh, this is very, very good. Thank you, Mr. Vieira, for bringing this up. This is very, very good. Yes, sir. You. Thank you, sir. Any other council members? If I may, sir. Councilman uh, Vieira. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for those comments. Councilman Goods, obviously, as a, a longtime police officer, you know better about this than anybody up here. Um, and, and thank you for your work on this and, and for everyone in the Tampa Police Department. It's a, I think it's a, it's a big drum that we have to bang as a, as a city a great deal. I, I see victims of crime issue as, as one of equity and as a social justice issue. I really, really do. Um, and it's not always portrayed that way, uh, that, that we have too many communities in the city, throughout Florida, throughout the United States, where um, there's a great deal of crime and violence and people who live there sort of take for granted that if I live in a, in a certain part and I earn a certain amount of income, then I'm gonna have to put up with a lot of crime and that's not right, that's not right. Um, and, and we ought to be there for victims of crime. There was some discussion before on Rise Up for Peace. You know, I would actually love to see that organization get support uh, in next year's budget from the city of Tampa, just a, a small amount uh, so that we can support them. They do such 
really, really amazing and remarkable work. But, you know, um, and, and a lot of us have gone to their uh, meetings and to their uh, efforts and rallies, et cetera. And, you know, I always say that I want to see those meetings and those rallies and those efforts as packed as city council used to be uh, two years ago when we were at the convention center, right? People throughout all of the city of Tampa ought to be engaged in this issue. And I always say that if you live in a gated community in Tampa Palms or Hunter's Green or Hyde Park or in Bayshore, crime and victims of crime is still your issue. And it's something that ought to matter to you because we ought to have the backs of people in this city. Um, and too many marginalized communities um, suffer from a, a, a violent crime, but also an attitude from other parts of the city that, oh, that's happening over there. Doesn't affect me and my gated community. And, and that's wrong. That is immoral. And so that's why I think it's really important for us to continue to push this. So then the city of Tampa then will be running, not through Tampa Police Department, but a monetary assistance program uh, for victims of crime, correct? Well, we at the police department have identified a potential of that, and that's something that we're going to ask the victim advocate when she begins in January to explore. Cool. Okay. So that's on our agenda, and I think what you bring up, Councilman Goods, is a good point. There, there seems to be a gap in services for victims prior to the state attorney or the U.S. attorney filing the charges. Once the charges are filed, there's a lot of resources for victims, so we're really going to try and breach that gap and see whatever we can do to assist um, any crime victim in the city of Tampa. Yes, Thank sir. you, ma'am. And, and, and if I may, I, so, and I also saw something there on the memorial, which I think is also something very important, a memorial for victims of crime uh, and gun violence, et cetera, within the city of Tampa. I, I, I think that's something that's very important. So maybe we can have this come back if the individual's beginning in January. Maybe we can have this come back in. What's the furthest that we can go out? Is it uh, the election? Is that the April? Actually, after, after, you, after, you address, after you address the calendar. Yeah, yeah. So does. let me, if, if I may, Mr. Chair, have this motion to come back to us in April. I'll give it another few months at that time just so that I don't forget. Um, so I'll motion for um, the status of the Victims of Crime Fund to come back to us in the, the last available week in April. There you go. And, and, and if you all need more time, I'll do that. It's all good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you motion again. made by Councilman Vieira, second by Councilman Mascaco. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Motion passes. Agenda item number nine, file number CM22-78005. Ms. Wynn. Good morning, Council. Osea Wynn, Administrative Neighborhood and Community Affairs. Um, you ask us to provide a report regarding the um, work that's being done at Henry and Ola. I provided a written report, and I'm here to answer any other additional questions you may have. Councilwoman Hurtak. Um, yes, uh, I, I actually was just out at Copeland Park too, and I know Henry and Ola has, have the same question. They want to know when the master plan for the parks um, might be available uh, to view. I know we, we're so close, but if you could just give us an update so that the community knows when we all can expect to see that. Yes, ma'am, gladly. So the master plan is currently in its final stages with the consultant. After the ma master plan um, has been reviewed by staff, by the administration, and by the mayor, the consultants will come and give a report to council, to city council. Um, if the council is at your pleasure and if you're interested, we will at that point or after that point provide um, uh, one on one discussions for the projects within your respective areas. So to answer, with all of that being said, I expect, anticipate the uh, master, ban master plan to be completed by February of this year. The approval, February, March, the first quarter of this year. Great, great. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I know everyone's really looking forward to that because folks really want some projects done, but I know most of them are going to be under that large umbrella. So uh, thank you for your work on that. I look forward to it. Yes, ma'am. Councilman Maniscalco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you very much, ma'am. Um, you know, since since I've been here, uh, a lot of parks have been built, and uh, with the help of council members and the support of the mayor, uh, you know, from Vila Brothers to the park on Clark to now the Frederick Douglass um, project, which is going to be in Port Tampa, we've been successful on a lot of uh, fronts. 
throughout the city and throughout the district. And Henry and Ola is a park uh, in Seminole Heights that is, uh, is a beautiful piece of property that's utilized by a lot of people. It's surrounded by residential. A gentleman named uh, Mr. Carranza has fought for years in getting improvements on that park, which some improvements are coming in. However, um, his big concern, one of his biggest concerns is the, um, the, the, the temporary community. I mean, you know, the, the, the trailer that's on the uh, property that's being used as a community park, uh, you know, and I understand his frustration because he sees the rest of the city, you know, from in, in East Tampa to, again, Vila Brothers to Julian Lane to Curtis Sixon before that and everything. Everybody's getting, you know, their improvements, and they have been asking and be very patiently waiting uh, for Henry and Ola. I know this question is going to continue coming up, but uh, knowing that as part of the master plan that you say will be completed in February, we'll have more direction moving forward and in future budgets to uh, possibly apply uh, funding for those improvements. So thank you very much, and I appreciate your report. Yes, sir. Anyone else? Thank you, Ms. Wynn. The next item is mine, too. Excellent. And that is uh, number 13. I'm sorry. I'm getting way ahead of myself. Number 10, uh, file number CM22-78192. We're going to be talking about the Ed Center. Yes, sir. I was asked to provide a report on the fencing at the Yet Center. I provided the report, and I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Councilman Goods? Yes, ma'am. Morning. Uh, I did talk to Sharisha at, at the briefing yesterday. My, my, one of the top concerns is the western side of the park, where the apartment complex is. That's where they normally just cut and tear up the fencing. But there doesn't mean really any real sturdy fencing. So I'm hoping that when we talk about looking at remodeling it, that we definitely have a, a, a some, that's something that is sturdy for that western portion. Uh, by the bleachers there, that's an issue. Uh, because again, uh, that's the only turf field we have on that side of town. And, and they've been just tearing it up. And we, we just, I remember when I first helped sign and, and get that uh, project going to get that field in there. Uh, but uh, we've asked for the fencing for many, many years. And uh, one of the deaf years, I'm hoping now we have a CRA that is a part of infrastructure as well. So I'm hoping that we can partner with them to see how we can get that fixed and have a sturdy fence to, to lock those folks out of there. Uh, people still are apart, but we have those scooters and we have all those dirt bikes are going in there and they're just, I just want to make sure we can just get that secured. Yes, sir. And, and uh, part of the, um, the discussion was having sustainable uh, solutions and we have taken your concerns about that the fence on the west side is next to the apartments and we'll put something in that will prevent the cutting of the fences and, and all of that. So we've heard you and we will implement something that will work for everyone. Thank you. Any other discussion? Questions or comments? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Item number 11, file number CM 22-78304, Mr. Spearman. Good morning, Council Greg Spearman, Purchasing Director. So item number 11 uh, relates to a motion that was made by uh, Councilman um, Vieira and seconded by Councilman Escalco regarding what efforts the city could take to increase participation of our small contractors with regard to small construction projects. So in February 2020, Council approved a job order contract, uh, which is designed as the procurement method for handling small to medium-sized construction uh, and renovation projects. It's an indefinite quantity Indefinite, indefinite delivery system in terms of handling those small contracts. So we have five prime contractors that are covered under that contract. Three of those prime uh, five contractors are city certified minority uh, women and business minority owned contractors. To date, we have run 129 projects through this contract to the total of about uh, just under $3 million, okay? Um, and in terms of our participation numbers, they are really fantastic under this particular alternative procurement method. So in terms of the SLB participation, it's about 6.94% uh, of the $3 million. But regarding the WMB participation, uh, it is almost at 50% at 49.59%. 
or a little over almost uh, $1.5 million. When we break that down even further, the BBE participation, I know Councilman Good is particularly interested in this, is 25% of that, a little over $762,000. The HBE participation is 5.02%, and the WB participation is 19.9%. So uh, this particular procurement method is working in terms of getting uh, more participation regarding equal business opportunity. Uh, in the memo that I sent to you, the average size project is about $66,461. Um, and you can see some of the examples of some of the projects that we've run through the program. Uh, we heard uh, Councilman Maniscalco talk about Villa Brothers. That's one of the ones that we are running through this particular, um, this particular process in terms of uh, jock projects. Now, this is not everything we do. This is just one effort in terms of how we attack EBO participation. This is just one. We still have all the efforts that are done by contract administration with regard to construction projects. And even on today's agenda, you have three items, items 28, 35, and 51, which are all EBO participation at 100% each for a total of about $558,000. I also want to share with you that today at 2 o'clock, we're having a subcontractor outreach event. Uh, Councilman Goose will remember that we started this back in 2013 um, at Cyrus Green, and you were there, sir, at that particular event. But we've outgrown the community centers in terms of these events. Today we have 238 registrants who will be coming to this event. And this is all about making sure that we get the word out in the community in terms of contracting opportunities with the city of Tampa, not just with purchasing, but also with contract administration. So we're making great strides. The community outreach is working and the numbers are showing that. Happy to address any questions if you have any. Councilman Goods. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, you know, again, the, the administration heard us. Uh, and we're working, uh, and I'm appreciative of that. Uh, I think now that we have the JLC and uh, we're having issue with the rehab program of getting people involved. Uh, and I think, uh, talking to Cole, Ms. Travis, and yourself, I think you, you're trying to find a way to get that in, and I think that'll get that program <coughs> moving because it's, it's just sitting there right now. People are hungry, so hopefully we can get people to work in with these small contracts, you know, painting and do things, things like that, roofing, whatever, and get them in. Uh, but my biggest thing, when we, when we talk about the contracts in itself, we still have to find a way for these small people to be, to be bonded. Uh, that's, that's a big thing I think we've got to look at. How can we hold money, get a job done, do whatever. But I think the bigger factor is looking at the bond and also with your small businesses. The biggest thing I hear, it takes too long for them to get paid takes too long. So I, those are two things we got to work on because the small business is the catalyst to get things moving. And I think you're on the right move using the JLC and can get some of those other minority contractors in there to do that work, uh, making sure they're certified, making sure that they can do the job, but also having uh, to take away a couple of roadblocks. I think if we can get the roadblocks, people can see that. I'm happy with the numbers that we're seeing, but if we can do better. I, I know we can because we have uh, people who have the skills who can uh, foresee how we can get it done with you and Ms. Travis and those others. So if we can just work on those items there, I think we can get to the promised land. Thank you, Councilman, because if I may respond, uh, we are meeting uh, with Ms. Travis's uh, portfolio next week to talk about some of the issues you talked about with regard to uh, some of the housing rehab projects and other things that they have going on right now. And hopefully we'll have an opportunity uh, to be able to apply this procurement method you know, to some of those needs that, that are there. I also would like to point out to you that these contracts are coming up for renewal in 2023. So I'm asking for your support early. Um, you know, those, these will probably be coming to you in January. So uh, in order to keep the momentum that we have and we have built, uh, it's going to be critical that we uh, be able to keep this process. Going. I think the third thing, Mr. Spearman, is making sure department heads and managers have the buy-in. Yes. I'm going, to be, I'm, I'm going to say that again, making sure that department heads and managers understand and have the buy-in to now go and utilize these programs that we're trying to implement. I think that's a key to doing what we used to do, the old, but let's just change that a little bit so we can go here down a new pathway. Absolutely. Councilman Maniscalco. 
My questions were answered. You were very in-depth and thorough. I just want to thank you for your, uh, your professionalism uh, and all that you do. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks for Charles. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, thank you for being aggressive about this issue. Um, an issue that we talked about before that's related is single bid and sole source contracts. Um, by my rough calculation, about 15% of the contracts on the agenda today are sole source or single bid. And I wonder, uh, first, anything we can do, please, to get those numbers down to almost nothing. I'd rather have, not, I'd rather have every, every bid have multiple bidders. But on the single bid ones, I wonder if there's a way to compile those for the last few months or last year and give them to these um, EBO contractors and say, look, here are contracts where you could have bid. Um, uh, and, and maybe a lot of them wouldn't qualify for some of them, but if there's a way that we can find more bidders. And then on the sole source, I wonder, n not to answer now, but I wonder also if there's a way that we can provide or have more open source contracts so that we're not tied to a single vendor to, uh, to, to um, have follow-up uh, work done. Um, conversation for another day, but just anything we can do to break things open so we can have more competitive bids, especially minority bidders. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman. You know, Mark, Councilman Goods. Since Mr. Carlson said that, the, the, another big thing I hear from the small businesses and minorities is saying that and I, our criteria, they're saying that it's so much criteria or red tape to get through the process. Mm -hmm. They just say, I don't want to go here. I would rather go to the county or the airport or the places. I mean, is, is, is the criteria too stringent? I mean, I mean, I have to ask that because when people are saying it's just so much, they just rather say, okay, I'll just try to find work other place because the city's too, too hard to get through. Well, it depends, Councilman Goose, on the, on the scope of the project, the complexity of the project. Uh, one of the things that we rely upon heavily is working um, with Ms. Osea Wynn's portfolio with Equal Business Opportunity to review those projects, those bids, those RFPs to make sure that we are not including things that may be more difficult. Now, I can tell you that one of the things that will help with that, and we're going to be coming back to you real soon, is to increase the limit in terms of our formal bids. It's right now capped at $25,000. So what that means is that the requirements for a formal bid are a lot more stringent. But we need to get that limit higher so we can eliminate some of those requirements and make it easier for some of our small businesses uh, to participate. Okay. Uh, so we. We do have a draft policy that we've written. Uh, it is on the legal review, and we're proposing that we change some of those limits so that we can get some of the more stringent requirements you know, out of those documents and make it easier for some of our smaller contracts to be. So we'll be coming to you with that um, probably sometime in 2023. We're looking at a massive overhaul and revamp, revamp of our procurement policy and procedures. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I just want to say that the more and more I, I hear about these things and we come up with ideas and you're saying, well, we're already working on them. I just want to say thank you again. It's very unusual that a department that has been working for so long in the same thing is so open to change and looking in different directions. And Absolutely. so I just want to thank you again for all the work you're doing. It's, it's you. really amazing. Um, we, see, we seem like we're coming up with great ideas and they're like, well, we're already doing so I think that's fabulous, and uh, thank you. And uh, yeah, look forward to what el other things you're bringing um, forward to us next. Thank you, Councilman Hurtag. We really have a team of individuals, uh, some of who are watching this meeting. Uh, we can't do all the work without uh, Ms. Wynn's team um, with Equal Business Opportunity. Uh, Katrina House, who actually runs this program, very passionate about it, very, very passionate. She is preparing now for the outreach event over the convention center. So we have a lot of dedicated folks behind the scene making all this good work happen. And that's what I'd like to hear a, a leader say is praising the people he works with. Mr. Spearman, that's why you and your team keep getting awards after awards after awards. Thank you for all the hard work you do. Thank you, Council. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, I just, I don't know, are you finished with this item? I'm just curious, uh, just before I go on. Yes. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, Council, you're at the noon hour, and I just want to remind you that by your motion this morning under your approval of the agenda, you are set to come back at 1.30 p.m. 
specifically to hear items number 75, 76, 77, and the attorney for that um, uh, from VMO will be uh, available online at that time. Just a reminder. Mr. Chairman. Councilman, I have that reminder. I want to remind you, we had a gentleman there on item number 12 from the incinerator, mm -hmm. and I think we ought to at least listen to him before we leave. Absolutely. I agree. I was hoping to get through the yeah, agenda before lunch. I just want to see. Sir. If I can. Yes. At 1.30 p.m., irrespective, will council be back in session to be able to take up this item? Yes. That's all. That, that, no, we, motion, we, already, that's we already said that. I'm, we already I'm, said that. I'm going to walk out at 12.15, like, period. Okay, good Good. So, good for you. Um, we'll, we'll, uh, no, I mean, because we, you have to have a reasonable amount of time to go do things. Correct. So if we I have to be back that. at 1.30, we really should be leaving right now. That, that's fine. Well, after this, after this. It's going to be long. How long is this I think this is more we'll than 15 still minutes. Have, we'll still have I, I agree. I, I think this is the longer. Council won't hurt that. Um, I believe this will be a half hour. All right. Easily. I believe now, then. The Again, try to get everything in before uh, lunchtime. Or recess. Well, what time?